Bueno, que Dios bendiga grandemente a toda nuestra preciosa audiencia. Nuevamente, verdad, aquí en el aire les enviamos abrazos a todos y realmente para mí siempre más que un gozo y un placer el poder conectarme e interactuar con todos eh, por medio de estas plataformas de redes sociales de nuestra era o nuestro tiempo, eh, a través de las cuales podemos traer el mensaje, eh, podemos compartir la palabra del Señor, podemos también tener nuestra plataforma de oración y... Podemos tener la oportunidad también de saludarle, de enviarle abrazos, saludos, eh, agradeciendo nuevamente por su sintonía. Realmente para mí es más que un gozo y un placer y un privilegio. Bueno, hoy vamos a estar en una continuidad eh, de algo muy importante. Ya les había hablado sobre esto del de ponche, digamos, no sé cómo se dirá en otros lugares, esto de el pago que se está haciendo con la mano derecha eh, sin necesidad de insertar ningún dispositivo electrónico y según algunos y entre toda la controversia no tienen buena espina de esto y según algunos también es un ensayo. Bueno, yo ya hablé sobre mi opinión relacionada al asunto y expliqué todas las cosas más que claras, pero de acuerdo a nuestro tiempo que estamos viviendo, llamado por el calendario profético principios de dolores, tenemos que seguir predicando sobre todas estas antesalas, sobre todo lo prefigurativo, lo que está comenzando, el inicio de todo, que va a tener un te terrible desenlace, además de las señales de las cuales he hablado muchas veces, que la Biblia habla y dice que serían en nuestro tiempo sucediendo de forma constante, de forma creciente y de forma progresiva. Ejemplo, guerras, rumores de guerra, hambre, pestilencia, señales en los cielos, terremotos. Así que además de ese listado, tenemos un surgir de la tecnología como nunca antes. Y yo quiero que usted me acompañe a buscar en la santa bendita palabra del Señor. Vamos a leer y vamos a interpretar todo este texto de la manera correcta, porque por mucho tiempo solo se estaba meramente predicando una parte de él. Es decir, que solamente la ciencia aumentaría, pero ahí dice más. Ahí dice más. Va, vamos a ver lo que dice todo. Daniel 12, 4. Pero tú, Daniel, guarda en secreto estas palabras y sella el libro hasta el tiempo del fin. O sea, igual que al apóstol Juan, Daniel tuvo revelaciones adicionales que no se les permitió decir. Yo sé que vienen cosas aún más escalofriantes de lo que la Biblia dice que van a venir en los días de la gran tribulación. Y ya Dios al decir unas que pasarán escondiendo otra, o sea, ya la cosa está clara para qué es eh, la razón en la que se predica en este tiempo de que huyas de la ira de venidera, de que Dios te libre de la hora de la prueba que ha de venir sobre la tierra para probar a los que se queden aquí, porque va a ser un tiempo difícil. Días como estos no los hubo ni los habrá de la gran tribulación que viene. Pero vamos a leer. Tú, Daniel, guarda en secreto estas palabras y sella el libro hasta el tiempo del fin. Y ahora dice muchos que correrán de aquí para allá, coma y el conocimiento, o sea, la ciencia aumentará. Yo creo que esto de la ciencia en aumento está más que probado también en nuestros días o en nuestro, bueno, en nuestros tiempos, lo que estamos viendo ahora además de los puntos bien específicos del calendario profético llamado principio de dolores, pero específicamente qué es esto de que muchos correrán para, de aquí para allá. La terrible oleada migratoria que se está viviendo, no solo aquí en los Estados Unidos, sino en el mundo entero, que parece que países enteros se quieren mudar para otro país. Una crisis migratoria como nunca antes, que no es como en el tiempo de antes, que por lo menos había su grupito, eh, vamos a ponerlo en este, en este aspecto, porque no se muda solamente hispanos. Para acá, para Estados Unidos, viene gente de muchos países. Inclusive el estadounidense, eh, que es el promedio, la descendencia estándar es que escocés, italiano, eh, irlandés, inglés, etc. O sea, un país que es América y América no se le puede poner como tal un solo grupo étnico estándar. O sea, América es América, el americano es americano. Lo que pasa es que no existe en el inglés una palabra para decir norteamericano. Por eso se llama aquí americano, meramente. Entonces, para la traducción, si usted quiere en el español, le pone entonces norteamericano, porque también conscientemente sabemos que América, obviamente, eso es eh, centro, norte y sur. Todo el mundo tiene que saber eso. 
y yo sé que a veces la ignorancia, pero pues también hay que entender que aquí en los Estados Unidos, a diferencia de en los países latinos, aquí hay trabajo que hasta la persona puede crecer profesionalmente sin necesidad de estudios universitarios y a veces es el, es el asunto con la ignorancia. Eh, pero imagínate, en Puerto Rico hay estudios universitarios donde la gente, hay mucha gente capacitada, preparada y estudiosa, pero son muchos de ellos ignorantes en cuanto a grupos étnicos, raza y etcétera. O sea que la cosa realmente es relativa y yo lo digo en confianza porque yo he viajado, yo he vivido, yo he visto, olvídate, ya está desde pequeño. Entonces, bueno, esta oleada migratoria, yo estaba leyendo y lo estaba compartiendo, ¿verdad? En Telegram, pero me parece que se movió aquí la cámara un poquito, pero estamos aquí. Yo, yo estaba riéndome porque yo estaba viendo ahora en Telegram, eh, bueno, eh, compartí en Telegram, estaba viendo una noticia que a mí me estaba dando risa, yo la comparo con una situación que pasa en Puerto Rico, en una isla de Puerto Rico que es Culebra. O sea, Puerto Rico técnicamente es un archipiélago. Archipiélago es que es la unión de varias islas, pero la que más se conoce es en el caso de Puerto Rico, donde está San Juan, eh, donde yo viví por ahí Camuy, que sería el área norte, todo eso. Pero Puerto Rico compone también en toda el área, digamos así, la, el archipiélago, compone la isla de Vieques, la isla de Culebra. Todo eso, ¿verdad? Es parte de Puerto Rico, aunque está separadito, pero es lo mismo, es parte. Entonces hay una isla ahí que se llama Culebra, que se está llenando de americanos, de, como se le dice así, ¿verdad? Gringos, que van retirados y hablan en inglés, no hablan español. Pero, mire, yo, yo les voy a ser bien honesto y bien franco con la cosa. Yo no apoyo el racismo ni a la versa ni a la inversa. El racismo no se apoya y tú tienes que tener cuidado con tus palabras y ser también justo. Les voy a poner un ejemplo. Aquí en Estados Unidos, en todo lo que compone la Orange County o el condado Orange, como se diría en el traducido al puertorriqueño China o naranja, en la traducción en la Florida, todo eso es boricua. Yo estuve por ahí. La gran mayoría es puertorriqueño y los americanos que hacen. Bueno, los americanos se van mudando para áreas que sean más, entre comillas, gringas. Entonces, en el caso de Culebra, en Puerto Rico, se está llenando de americanos retirados y allá se quejan. Pero entonces, tú no te puedes quejar de que en la Florida, en esa parte de Orange County, está lleno de puertorriqueños. Entonces, hay que ver las cosas de diferentes perspectivas y el racismo no es a la versa ni a la inversa. Entonces, si es verdad, allá el puertorriqueño, pues sí, sí, hablan inglés. Yo puedo decir sí hablan inglés, pero la cuestión es que a veces tienen las mismas manías de las cuales uno viene huyendo, que uno no quiere convivir así. Entonces, para uno vivir la vida peleando y vivir la vida amargado y estar diciendo improperios y cosas que no valen la pena, ¿qué hace uno? Uno se muda. Pero entonces tú acuartelas cuando entonces tú te mudas con tus mañas a donde está el otro que no quiere vivir con las mismas mañas que tú tienes. Entonces, aquí en los Estados Unidos, la gran mayoría del hispano no habla inglés y muchos ni ponen eh, interés en aprenderlo. Igual también es el problema con los, entre comillas, gringos. Cuando se mudan, no les interesa muchas veces aprender otro idioma que no sea el inglés. Mira, yo tengo un cuñado que es gringo y él hasta me bromea de eso. Que me bromeaba de eso, las veces que estuve con compartiendo, o sea, que el americano, o sea, el gringo, no aprende otro idioma sino el inglés. Y yo puedo decir que en el caso del hispano también, en su gran mayoría, no quieren aprender otro idioma que no sea el español. Eso es en una gran mayoría, porque aquí hay gringos, entre comillas, que sí te hablan inglés, eh, eh, inglés y español. Igual, hispano, que sí te hablan inglés y español. Pero es para que usted vea las diferentes vertientes. Y ya la Biblia dice que muchos correrán de aquí para allá. Ahora, esta me dio mucha risa y verdad, y me perdonan, pero esta es una quejadera que tienen allá en México alguna gente, creo que es en Ciudad de México, donde californianos y otros estadounidenses dicen que están inundando la Ciudad de México y algunos quieren que se vayan. <risa> Mi hermano, pero usted sabe cuánto mexicano hay aquí en los Estados Unidos de América. Entonces apenas se va eh, eh, moviendo un grupo, cualquiera sean las consecuencias de que se estén mudando los estadounidenses allá. Y ahora ellos eh, quieren, los mexicanos quieren que los gringos se vayan de ahí. Pero si hablan de ellos aquí, entonces ellos se molestan. 
Ay, mire, yo, yo, peor que el en vivo ahora, yo me estaba riendo un buen rato, porque es que, o sea, esto es lo increíble. O sea, entonces, si fuera a la inversa, todas esas caravanas de todo centro, de todo Sudamérica que se están viniendo aquí a, a, al momento, aquí a los Estados Unidos, y que inclusive hay estados, áreas en estado, por ejemplo, Maryland, eso es El Salvador, en, 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 en partes ahí, usted lo sabe. Virginia, hay áreas que eso es El Salvador. En, eh, allá en la Florida, hay áreas que eso es Puerto Rico. Eh, y si yo me sigo moviendo en Texas, eso, es, eso, eso ahí está eh, muchísimo mexicano. Entonces, ustedes se están quejando de que supuestamente en Ciudad de México se les está metiendo mucho gringo. <risa> y en Puerto Rico, en esa isla de, de Culebra, se quejan de que los gringos no hablan, eh, que no hablan eh, español. Pero igual que el americano promedio aquí en los Estados Unidos no quiere aprender otro idioma, igual el hispano promedio no quiere aprender otro idioma. Entonces yo tengo... <risas> Ay, perdón, pero es que ustedes comentan que también me hacen reír. Mira, mira, yo tengo entonces, o sea, yo tengo entonces que ser equitativo. Esa es la palabra correcta. Yo tengo que ser justo. Yo no puedo, eh, eh, yo no puedo. <risas> mira, no se puede hacer racismo ni a la versa ni a la inversa. Y si a tus paisanos se les soporta que se metan acá, no te quejes, no estés con quejadera, porque parece que a mucha gente le encanta la quejadera. Y muévete, muévete a un sitio, como hace el americano aquí promedio, a un sitio que sea más de tu gusto en vez de estarte quejando por la vida, porque yo a veces no sé cuál es la quejadera. Mire, yo aquí tengo varios videos. Usted sabe que en nuestros en vivo yo siempre pongo un conteo antes de entrar y había una gente aquí y justamente son de México que se estaban quejando. Ay, que ese conteo me desespera. Pues, pues mire, tonto. <risa> ya quedó la grabación. Dele hacia el frente y deje la quejadera. Y hay otra cosa que yo le voy a decir porque vamos a ver un testimonio impresionante de una persona que vio la gran tribulación. Hay otra cosa que me han escrito. Cuando yo estaba, por ejemplo, compartiendo unos videos proféticos y una, unos videos aquí, ¿verdad? De, de un estadounidense llamado King Clement. Primero, si yo ponía los subtítulos, se quejaban de que no querían leer subtítulos. Después, si yo lo ponía traducido, entonces decían que cómo se puede probar que realmente él dijo eso, que lo pusiera en sus títulos también. <risa> es que parece que es cultural así, ¿verdad? De mucha gente ser quejón o ser quejona. O sea, yo no sé. Entonces, imagínate, mi hermano, yo, yo por lo menos, yo por lo menos, ¿verdad? Le doy soluciones. Si a ti no te gustó un lugar, múdate. A mí no me gustó donde yo vivía y yo me mudé. Entonces la cuestión es que si me mudo, yo no quiero volver a lo mismo. Entonces si se muda el mismo tipo de gente con el cual yo no quiero convivir alrededor y yo sé que no me va a ser de bendición, me mudo, pero yo no me estoy quejando. Si sí digo dos o tres cosas que son reales, pero yo no voy a vivir la vida diciendo lo mismo. Entonces, mi hermano, yo quiero que usted. <risa> yo quiero que ustedes me expliquen eso. Cómo apenas están empezando a mudar algunos norteamericanos o estadounidenses allá y ustedes se están quejando, pero esto aquí, ¿cuántos mexicanos no hay aquí en los Estados Unidos? <risa> igual también allá en Puerto Rico o igual, o sea, mi hermano, mira, yo, yo tengo que ser equitativo, o sea, yo tengo, yo tengo que ser justo, yo, yo como creyente, o sea, dicen la palabra, eh, 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 ay Dios mío, déjame ver, que no me ría, dicen la palabra que justicia y juicio son el cimiento del trono de Dios, entonces, olvídate tú, no, 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 no. Entonces, yo quería de forma inicial presentar estas cosas porque ya hemos estado pues obviamente viendo cumplimientos proféticos muy claros. Están en nuestros ojos, la ciencia aumentaría o el conocimiento y también muchos correrían de aquí para allá. O sea, iba a haber una ola migratoria de todos lados. O sea, está claro, estamos viviendo el principio del fin, no el fin como tal, pero sí el principio del fin de las profecías bíblicas. Y yo por aquí les voy a compartir eh, un testimonio y ya en esta vez, verdad, eh, de la persona que lo tuvo directamente del mensaje dado en el año 2000, una persona de nombre Ken Peters, eh, este testimonio ha estado dando la vuelta de hace un tiempito. Bueno, yo realmente fue el que lo traje a coalición y se ha estado eh, hablando. 
eh, hay una parte muy ilustrativa que menciona de forma resumida el testimonio de él por lo menos unos 30 minutos, pero en esta ocasión todos juntos vamos a estar aquí viendo la predicación que él hace en el año 2000 muy resaltante relacionado a las cosas que él vio que habían de venir y dicho de su propia boca con subtítulos abajo. Así que, bueno, pues imagínate, si entonces yo lo pongo traducido o él hablando como que estuviera en español, entonces dicen, ¿y cómo va a ser verdad si él lo dijo? Pero entonces si le pongo el subtítulo, después se queja, no, entonces van a tener que decidir qué vamos a hacer. Entonces yo decido por ustedes y que sea él hablando en inglés y que sea con los subtítulos abajo. Entonces vamos a ver y ir analizando todo lo que él vio de una forma clara. Eh, ya yo había hecho un video sobre este testimonio, pero en la manera, o sea, lo, lo resumido y no era él predicando. Pero ahora vamos a ir viendo lo que él vio, porque este fue una persona inconversa que aún estando inconversa en el año de 1981, tiene como un tipo de sueño visión donde Dios lo transportó y él vivió la gran tribulación como que se hubiese quedado o fuera otro personaje. Estas son las cosas increíbles, impresionantes cuando el Señor como tal te da una visión. Yo se lo voy a explicar un poquito más. Eh, yo les he hablado varias veces, inclusive la vez pasada que yo hablé en la primera parte de este testimonio que estuvo resumido 30 minutos, el cual está en nuestro perfil eh, personal de Facebook. Este es el perfil de la página pública. Eh, yo había hablado de una revelación que ha sido la más impactante que yo he tenido. Sí tuve una revelación muy impactante en los días de la pandemia. De esto también les he contado y quizás nuestra audiencia, algunos de los que están conectados saben. Donde Dios me mostró justamente estos dos lugares, México y Puerto Rico, que venía un terremoto terrible. Y yo me veía, yo creo que predicando, estaba en un sitio, ¿verdad?, en, en México, después de que pasó el evento, yo vi unas cosas con lujo de detalle, edificios cayéndose, bueno, una cosa, a mí me sorprendió mucho porque es que yo nunca había tenido una visión de esto, más bien para entre comienzos y finales de los años 2000, yo había entrevistado personas que sí habían tenido revelaciones, que sí habían tenido testimonio de esto de principios de dolores que venía. Entonces yo... Yo cuando tengo esta visión y veo unas cosas demasiado de gráficas, cuando la gente está, imagínate, en medio del de tormento, en el terremoto, perdiendo su vida, etcétera. Y no, no, no voy a, no voy a entrar en detalles. Ya yo he entrado en detalles. No, no quiero, no quiero de verdad acordarme. Pero vi una parte resaltante donde yo estaba con un traje y a mí me llama la atención un traje eh, que fue el que mi mamá me regaló. Cuando yo por primera vez ya iba a predicar oficialmente, que la primera vez que oficialmente yo prediqué, imagínate, fue frente a las cámaras en un culto de los viernes en el ministerio de Cristo viene de mi abuelo Gille o el que era el ministerio de él. Eh, entonces esto yo pienso que es algo simbólico que creo yo he estado pensando mucho en esto y esto no lo he dicho antes, pero yo creo que esto es como un simbolismo de que ahí sería después de los terremotos como que el comienzo del fin de todo porque a mí Dios siempre me había inquietado que yo iba a tener al final de todo como unos tres años finales ministeriales que iban a ser muy poderosos. Eh, al final de todo, yo no sé realmente, o sea, yo no le puedo dar fecha, o sea, yo no puedo dar fecha para arrebatamiento, porque yo, mire, si, si yo le doy fecha para arrebatamiento, ya entonces me equivoqué, porque ni aún Jesucristo lo supo cuando estuvo aquí, o él decía, él, él lo dijo en su primera venida, ni aún el hijo, solo los ángeles, ahora él lo sabe porque él está ya glorificado y él es el que va a dar la orden. Pero si ni aún los ángeles lo saben, yo no lo voy a saber. Yo puedo saber las, las profecías bíblicas y puedo decirte que está cerca, pero no te puedo dar nunca una fecha exacta. Si algún día la daría o me, me equivoco, no puedo, no se puede. Y a mí no me gusta equivocarme. O sea, yo por eso claramente cuando vengo y traigo estudios bíblicos, hago el mensaje. O sea, yo me empapo. Yo, yo no estoy diciendo burradas ni tonteras. Entonces eh, eso me, me, me llama mucho la atención. Y yo estaba predicando allá en México después de ver eso, me vi, el Señor me transportó. Yo estaba viendo, es como un sueño visión, por eso es que les he dicho varias veces, a veces entre sueño visión es un poco distinguir uno del otro porque puede que te quedes dormido, pero también a la vez tienes una visión, Dios te transporta en un futuro o ves algunas cosas que son simbólicas. Y había una señora, se veía mexicana, era como gordita y venía a abrazarme muy desconsolada porque había perdido a su familia y estaba acompañada de otra gordita y eso era todo ahí un destrozo y estaba con mi Biblia, parece que yo iba a predicar. Y si yo estoy ahí de cabeza, uy, siento a Dios cuando lo diga, si yo estoy de cabeza, créame que es que Dios me llamó y me mandó. 
y eso fue en la pandemia. Pero eh, eh, la experiencia de visión más eh, poderosa que yo he tenido en la vida fue una vez que yo estaba orando al lado de mi abuelo Gille en el que era el tercer piso de su ministerio, donde antes eh, eh, había un cuartito que era un cuarto de ayuno donde la gente se retiraba y yo me recuerdo siempre que se terminaba un programa ya que se llamaba Orando con el Pueblo, que comenzaba a las seis de la mañana y terminaba a las siete y que yo hice muchas veces con él y a veces eh, yo lo cubría cuando él salía a predicar para otros lados, etc. Ese día estábamos él y yo solito, arrodillados uno al lado del otro, orando. Los demás hermanos estaban regaditos, digámoslo de esa forma, por el tercer piso. Usualmente, muchas veces, hay qué tiempo más hermoso. Estaban todos los hermanos, un grupo de hermanos, yo al lado de mi abuelo, todos ahí orando, poniendo, ay, qué rico, Dios mío, está tan bueno. Eso era como estar en el tercer cielo. Iba gente de visita, oraban, claro, eso era súper, 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 pero de verdad. Pero en esa ocasión, él estaba, yo sentí como, ahí siempre se sentía el tercer cielo porque ahí se, se oraba, pero en esa ocasión había algo diferente, se sentía como algo diferente. Yo estaba chamaquito, apenas empezando y sí, había tenido experiencias espirituales, pero esa me asustó porque mira, mi abuelo está una sillita de distancia ahí, ahí mismo conmigo y está ahí orando ahí tranquilo, a veces, a veces hasta en la oración se descansa un poquito, pues ese hombre viajaba, ese no tenía descanso. Cierro yo mis ojos y de momento, boom, me transporto como a un lugar. Entonces era como, como, como de esta forma. Yo se los voy a explicar. Yo estaba aquí orando en la silla y yo estoy así. Y cuando inmediatamente cierro los ojos, es como que se puso de momento. O sea, como que me transporté y estaba con los ojos cerrados. Y a la vez, en el futuro, me sentí en el presente. Estaba yo así, mire, yo hice así. Y con los ojos cerrados y estaba viéndolo todo. Estaba yo en una plataforma que era como humilde de madera instalada. Era en un lugar en Latinoamérica. Estaba yo justamente con el mismo traje que yo en la pandemia sueño que yo le fui a predicar en México a aquella señora. Estoy yo ahí en esa plataforma predicando de espalda y yo no me vi que yo era un viejito ni que habían pasado años de años de siglos de qué sé yo. O sea, era era o sea se veía que no iba a pasar mucho tiempo y yo estaba de espalda. Y la gente atenta y se sentía en el ambiente como que miedo. Se sentía en el ambiente que la gente quería saber qué estaba sucediendo, que está, habían venido situaciones para el mundo y que la gente estaba atenta, pero muy atenta escuchando la palabra. Y yo sí, sí, los he visto atentos siempre que vamos a los compromisos, porque yo obviamente eh, soy bien profundo en las cosas que hablo en la Biblia y de verdad interesa mucho y uno ora y esto arropa también a la persona. Pero es que ahí había una cuestión que era mucho todavía más profunda, a otro nivel se sentía. Abro los ojos y yo, digo, yo, yo me pongo así, miro primero al lado para mi abuelo y digo como que como que si abuelo está siendo testigo de esto, porque es que sentí que en el tercer piso como que eso se había ido y a la vez yo estaba, pero que estaba transportado en el futuro. Y abuelo ahí tranquilo orando ahí en el tercer cielo en su mundo. Miro para allá a ver si hay algún hermano que ha sentido algo. O sea, esa fue la reacción. Si alguien ha sentido algo, si alguien quizás estaba viendo algo y todo el mundo estaba tranquilo, no se oía. Mira, si se caía una aguja, se escuchaba del silencio sepulcral que había. Entonces yo dije, bueno, esto, esto, esto fue algo ahí normal. Pues yo voy a cerrar los ojos, voy a orar otra vez. Cierro los ojos, inmediatamente da continuidad la cosa. Ahí llorando un montón de gente, un montón de gente. Parecía un lugar ahí lleno, un, como un estadio, un montón de gente asustada. Los eventos queriendo buscar de Dios, queriendo escuchar de la palabra. Y daba, era como, parecía hasta como un tiro de cámara. O sea, como que Dios quería que yo viera, que yo viera. Entonces yo dije, uy, yo, yo abrí los ojos y me asusté. Entonces yo no quise escandalizar, no quise molestar a mi abuelo ni a nadie. Entonces yo cogí y me fui calladito, me levanté de a poquito tú sabes, y me fui caminando ahí, a donde estaba el cuarto de ayuno, y abrí tú sabes, eh, el agua y me, me iba a echar agua en la cara, a ver si eso se iba, bueno, cuando tú te vas a echar agua en la cara tú cierras los ojos, ¿verdad? Bueno, cerraba los ojos, me echaba agua en la cara y pff, otra vez para allá, entonces era una cosa que era como que tenía un visor espiritual en, la, eh, eh, en los ojos que me transportaba una y otra vez para ese evento y yo me asusté, yo dije, uy, yo me voy de aquí. <risa> yo estaba chamaquito, pero es que era una cosa que, que me habían puesto y lo cerraba y veía. Entonces yo dije, no, yo me voy. Entonces, olvídate, como dicen en algunos lugares, a mí me da risa, dejé el pelero, dejé todo, me fui. O sea, yo dije, yo me voy de aquí, me bajé, me fui del tercer piso, me fui por la escalera. A ver. <risa> 
porque es que la, la visión no se iba. Y yo estaba chamaquito, imagínate, yo, yo empecé eh, ahí trabajando desde bien joven. Y tan solo, ¿cuánto? Un año y algo después fue que empecé a tener experiencias espirituales que Dios me mandó a predicar y empezamos así. Y era muy fuerte. Si hubiera sido en este tiempo, si eso se manifiesta ahora, yo me quedo con los ojos cerrados y miro todo detalle. Y ni me asusto, porque ahora, imagínate, yo no estoy experimentado con tanta cosa. Entonces, yo les hablo mi experiencia. Vamos ahora a compartir y a, ¿qué dice ahí? El miedo no andaba en burro, dice. Ahí. <risa> Ay, Dios mío, qué risa. Bueno, vamos a ver, porque este hermano, para el 1981, tiene una visión. Tiene una visión cuando ni siquiera muchos de nosotros habíamos nacido. Y él viene y la cuenta en el año 2000, a comienzos de milenio. Yo quiero verdad, ponerle por aquí este testimonio. La cuestión es que él era inconverso, él no sabía de la Biblia y él sueña algunas cosas con detalle. Y yo voy a poner ahora, hablando de la misma boca de él, en la misma predicación, eh, que él comienza a mencionar sobre este testimonio que fue de Ken Peters. Y vamos a ir verdad, por aquí viendo y comentando y vamos a ir explicando unas cosas. Esperamos que puedan leer los subtítulos, porque si lo pongo entonces que hable con la boca en español o que como que fue, estuviera hablando en español o se ha traducido. Entonces me dicen que cómo se puede comprobar que eso fue lo que dijo. Bueno, pues ahí está. Entonces nos quedamos con subtítulos, mi hermano. Vamos a ver. Gloria a Dios. Bueno, parece que aquí ahora. <coughs> Bueno, déjenme ver porque aquí parece que hay una cosita. Ay, señor. Bueno, bueno, vamos a ver por aquí porque yo creo que este, parece que esto nos dejó, nos dejó embaucado. <risa> Deme un momentito que yo creo que es que hay que poner aquí una clave o una cosita para que esto salga. Eh, este testimonio es muy impactante. Veamos a ver si ahora nos sale por aquí. Si no, pues déjenme buscar rapidito y vamos a extraer por aquí verdad el file que yo lo tengo por aquí directo desde el teléfono oye mi hermano pero de verdad que hay que gozarse vamos a ver vamos a ver por aquí yo creo que por aquí lo tenemos ok por aquí va bajando y ahora lo vamos a ver vamos a ver denme un, denme un momentito por aquí ahora Thanks a lot. I'm glad to be with every one of you here in South Bend. A little tired. We've been quite busy here lately, but filled with the Holy Ghost. I'd like to... Bueno, espero que ahí lo estén viendo. Ese es él, ese es Ken Peters, el que tiene la revelación de la gran tribulación cuando él no era convertido y aquí él comienza a dar algunas palabras. Vamos a seguir escuchando. Start first with a word of prayer tonight, if that'd be okay with each of you. Maybe you can... Take the hand of the person next to you and let's just agree for the Lord's release upon this night and what he has in mind. Lord, we give you praise for the, the love of God that you've extended through us through Jesus Christ. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you that that mercy is new every morning and we thank you for the extension of it upon our lives even this very hour. Lord, we desire that you would receive glory tonight in all that's said and accomplished in this meeting. We desire, Lord, that your spirit would direct each of us to not only have a, a voice to speak, but ears to hear and hearts to apply. Saludo. Los subtítulos yo los veo claro. Van a tener que de alguna forma trabajar cada cual con su celular, pero aquí yo lo voy a seguir directo. Todo se ve bien. Se ve de forma clara. Yo lo estoy viendo aquí, inclusive hasta yo lo estoy viendo. Yo no sé qué celulares tienen cada cual. Yo de verdad les puedo hacer siempre la ayuda, la ayuda verdad, hasta donde puedo. Pero aquí yo lo veo clarito. Les agrandé inclusive ahí la imagen. Así que así lo dejamos. Vamos a seguir viendo y vamos a seguir analizando por acá. Apply the truth that you would give to us. We give you praise, Lord, and we thank you for the authority that you've given to us to hold back the forces that would oppose us in your work, Lord. Tonight, Lord Jesus, we say be magnified in our midst and give us a sensitivity to give uh, the direction of your spirit as you would lead. Nothing more and nothing less, Lord. And for that, we give you praise In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I want to begin to start sharing with you tonight, um, first from a background. 
Ahora, eh, miren qué es lo que pasa. Aquí en el caso de Facebook hay subtítulos. Cuando hablas en inglés, te pone subtítulos en inglés. Cuando hablas en español, te pone subtítulos en español. Entonces, cuando se quede la grabación, yo no puedo dejar la imagen grande porque se van a ver abajo los subtítulos en inglés bloqueando los subtítulos en español. Yo lo que les puedo recomendar es que miren, miren el teléfono, giren el teléfono para que la imagen se vea grande para yo poder dejar la imagen así, porque esta es la única manera en la que van a poder leer los subtítulos. Meramente agranden ahí o busquen, pues que yo tampoco les puedo hacer el trabajo y meterme por ahí. Mira, mi hijo, haz esto así. Así parece que es que algunos parece que piensan que también se lee la Biblia y por eso no entienden, mi hermano, y me disculpan y me perdonan. Pero siempre hay que buscar la solución. Yo no sé cómo los tiene acostumbrado el pastor o yo no sé qué, pero cada cual acuerde, se tiene que trabajar. Ustedes son inteligentes. Breguen con eso. Usted, al principio la sabiduría es el Señor y si hay temor de Dios o el temor de Dios, lo van a ver. Mira, yo veo, yo veo eso claro. Traten de agrandar la imagen porque si se las agrando más en el en vivo van a poder ver los subtítulos en español, pero el problema es que después cuando deje la grabación grabada abajo, los subtítulos que va a poner Facebook van a ser en inglés por encima de los de español y no van a poder ver. Así que sigo. That may, may seem a little unusual to you um, from where I came from and you may have to actually try to place yourself Uh, in the type of thinking that I was involved in at the time. Uh, I was born and raised as a Roman Catholic. Uh, my parents were Portuguese and, and Irish, and so there's a, a long lineage there of uh, Roman Catholicism. So uh, if you can possibly try tonight to put yourself in that kind of thinking, I think the, uh, the uh, presentation of the dream might help you. Is there anybody here tonight that uh, was a practicing Roman Catholic uh, before they met Jesus? Quite a few here tonight. Keep your hands up. That way I know who my friends are later on. Oh, okay, good, good. You'll know what I'm talking about in some of the different aspects of this presentation. Uh, as a little boy, I began to have visions. I wasn't sure what a vision was. This first happened to me as we were doing a traditional ceremony in the church called Stations of the Cross. Some of you folks might remember what that was. These were ten stations set up in a Catholic church where you would pray the rosary. When I received this dream, to kind of skip ahead just a moment, uh, I was not a Christian. I wasn't saved. I hadn't read really much of the Bible whatsoever except a few uh, passages on Sunday in church. We, we had a few passages that we would read occasionally. And in high school, I read uh, uh, the Gospel of John. So uh, I wasn't in a place where I knew what was happening in this dream. And this... Uh... Bueno, como yo le vengo diciendo, ¿verdad? Vamos a ir comentando algunas cosas para que puedan entender sobre este testimonio. Él habla de que antes él era un católico romano, no era convertido. Es lo que yo les he venido diciendo. Cuando él tiene este sueño, esta visión para el año de 1981, él está ahí predicando en el año 2000. Eh, cuando él viene a tener esta visión, él, él, no, él no conocía, no conocía nada, nada de la Biblia y la forma en la que la tiene, dice algunas, algunos algunas cosas que solamente nosotros los que nos hemos criado, ya si tuviéramos el sueño, lo pudiéramos ver de la manera específica en la cual él soñó. Pero se lo sigo dejando por aquí. Ahí están los subtítulos. De acuerdo, recuerde, o sea, trate, trate, brega, tra, trate de, de leerlo bien. Uh, disturbed me greatly. And so you'll see tonight as this begins to unfold that uh, God is an amazing God as to why he would reveal something to someone that knew nothing at all. And so I'm going to kind of ask you, try to put yourself in that place tonight, realizing that uh, don't sit in here tonight uh, for, for long as you're hearing the dream, knowing what you know right now, but try to put yourself, so to speak, in a place where you didn't know any of this, and it was being revealed to you in such a way uh, that it was the first time that you ever saw or heard such things uttered. As I said, I began to have visions as a little boy uh, in the second grade, Uh, the first time was when the Stations of the Cross, which were pictures on the wall, actually came to life and Jesus was uh, carrying the cross in the week of Passion. I saw him as a little boy with the crown of thorns on his head, uh, just shoved into his, uh, his head. They were long thorns. They weren't like what I had always thought in my mind, maybe like rose thorns or something like that. But they bueno, él está hablando de las visiones. Les quiero explicar a los que han dicho que las letras están muy pequeñas. Miren, miren, miren mi celular. Ustedes lo miran así. Miren, lo miran así. Lo miran de esta manera. Y ahí podrá ver las letras más grandes. 
es fácil, mi hermano. No, no siempre es así. Mira, el celular se mueve para el lado. <risa> bueno, no le puedo ayudar más. Sigamos viendo. They were long thorns and they were actually some of them were protruding from the sides of his, uh, his head. He was bleeding a, a great deal down his face. His face was uh, beaten uh, extensively, almost to the point that it was difficult to tell uh, who this person was. Many things I've learned over the years uh, from following the Lord that were actually uh, clear scriptural directions about his life that I saw in visions before I had read the Bible. This is part of the reason that I'm so certain about things that God has shown me because of how they've come to pass and played themselves out. As I saw this, uh, I saw from the point of him carrying the cross where the lacerations on his back were more than just stripes. I always imagined in my mind they were just, you know, stripe marks, but they were actually deep lacerations uh, where even the, the tissue of his muscles were exposed. And so it was a very gruesome thing to see as a little boy. I saw him crucified. The cross I saw was not high off the ground, but actually uh, only about two feet off the ground. Obviamente él está comenzando, ¿verdad?, en la predicación antes de dar al 100% el testimonio. Ya está hablando que él, siendo inconverso, eh, ya el Señor le había mostrado, bueno, lo que él va a hablar. Pero a la vez está explicando de que ya desde pequeñito se estaba como que manifestando este don de, del Señor revelarle cosas a través de visiones. Esto es algo que siempre desde niño se va a manifestar y quizás puede trabajar de forma progresiva o se te va a manifestar primero de niño y luego en el caso de la edad más adulta o, o teenager, adolescente, como me pasó a mí, que eso a los 12 años yo tuve un sueño donde el Señor Jesucristo se me presentó y me dijo que le contara todos sus problemas. En aquel momento yo estaba pasando por una situación difícil, como lo fue el divorcio de mis padres y más en el entorno donde estaba, no me gustaba, eso no, 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 es, es horrible. Y entonces ese fue un, un, un de niño una revelación muy linda que yo tuve del Señor Jesús. Eh, no lo vi tan claramente en el sueño, pero ya esto era claro de que más adelante iban a venir un sinnúmero de revelaciones y visiones. Yo no sabía de eso. Yo no, si, si, si me preguntaran años antes, yo no sabía. Pero ya para esas edades de adolescente comenzaron esas visiones a manifestarse de una manera poderosa. Y el Señor también confirmando el llamado. O sea que yo en este caso les explico, ¿verdad? Y me identifico con lo que el hermano está predicando o está diciendo antes de hablar de la visión que él tuvo eh, del caso de la gran tribulación. Entonces, si usted se puede identificar con esto, usted sabe que usted mismo está en ese mismo camino. Mi consejo es que no se asuste cuando vengan estas visiones. Bueno, yo sé que lo primero siempre va a haber impresión, más si, si, si eres de niño. Mire, mire lo que él dijo, mire lo que él dijo, mire lo que yo le conté sobre lo que tuve yo cuando estuve hace unos años orando en el Ministerio de Cristo, viene de chamaquito al lado de mi abuelo. Cuando eres de una edad un poco más joven te va a asustar, pero cuando tengas entonces después un poco más de experiencia, eh, mi recomendación es vívela, vívelo, vívelo. O sea, y mira con detalle porque hay cosas que Dios quiere mostrar y no se puede dejar pasar eso. Vamos a seguir. Bueno, creo que aquí no podemos, este, parece que dar mucho, eh, mucho stop, porque creo que parece que hay un problema con, con el caso de la, eh, con el caso de la grabación. Eh, así que vamos a tener que pasarla un poquito, ¿verdad? Toda más de corrido. Eh, yo por lo menos trato de explicarle, ¿verdad? Algunas cositas para no perdernos y para más o menos entender lo que el, el hermano, ¿verdad? Dice en su contexto. Eh, pero vamos a tratar, ¿verdad?, de, de pasarla toda de corrido eh, lo más que podamos en esta transmisión y quizás también así es, es bueno porque aprovechamos el tiempo. Vamos, vamos ahora a adelantar aquí. Él, él ya está diciendo que de niño este, le dio miedo ver una de una visión que tuvo de Jesús. Sigamos viendo. Sounded like a, a, a car horn uh, from the 70s. How many remember what car horns sounded like in the 70s? They were very loud horns in those days. Or now they're just kind of a little beep, 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 beep kind of horn. But in those days, I mean, if you really laid on the horn, they were loud. This kind of sounded like that, except for it was extremely loud, very ear piercing, and it, it lasted for a long period of time, kind of like a stuck horn. Has anyone ever heard a stuck horn? Yeah. It was very similar to that. 
uh, right at that moment of hearing this, I was given the ability, again, I'll share with you some things that seem to be very chronological in how this dream worked out, and yet in some places I can't tell you specific time frames because it was almost as though I was interjected into different situations uh, without the understanding of time moving along. Claro, entonces eso revela que la visión fue real. Sigamos viendo. Some things were just very panoramic. It was just a wide, big picture that I saw. But at this point of the dream, I was given the opportunity uh, to see kind of from the, uh, the heavens looking down on the earth. And what I saw was that I was able to see it, the globe was kind of out here like this. And I was able to see very clearly many cemeteries and graveyards. Then I was brought very close to many of these graveyards. And what I saw was a very unusual thing to me. It was that the ground was breaking open. Literally, the dirt was breaking open kind of violently, and people were coming out of the graves. Um, I'll tell you that as a Catholic, I prayed many, many times that uh, I believed in the resurrection of the dead. But I, I don't really believe at that point in, in the dream, especially, that I was persuaded that that would actually happen. Nuevamente, él era católico antes de ser convertido y viene a tener esa visión antes de convertirse. Hay algo, eh, yo les quiero explicar en el caso de la traducción Prey, en el caso de Estados Unidos, recuerde que aquí, esto aquí no, no, no se fundó con católicos, se fundó con cristianos eh, que venían de la persecución de Inglaterra. Y la palabra Prey también en el inglés. Eh, es una palabra que se dice para orar o para rezar y por eso algunos eh, cometen la equivocación cuando traducen y confunden la palabra orar y rezar. En el caso del español, rezar es otra cosa, orar es otra cosa. Y uh, les quiero explicar antes de pasar esta parte. Él solamente ve la resurrección de los muertos, que es parte del arrebatamiento y es parte de la primera resurrección para los salvos, los cuales son arrebatados inmediatamente resucitan. Esa fue la parte que él vio, pero no quiere decir que la otra parte no sea real. Fue la parte que Dios a él le mostró, como a mí me mostró los terremotos en México y Puerto Rico, pero eso no quiere decir que no vayan a haber más lugares donde estos terremotos hayan o, o sucedan, mejor dicho, mejor habla, me, propiamente definiéndolo. Porque obviamente quizás es que vamos a ir para allá a predicar cuando sucedan o de una manera más prominente que en otros lugares donde pasen. Sigamos. I know now that that's what I saw. I saw dead people resurrected from the graves. The condition that they came out was very unusual. And uh, the, the other thing that was unusual was that uh, one cemetery plot uh, headstone would have a person come out of the dirt and one next to it would not. There, it seemed to be a, a, a kind of a, a not, not just random, but kind of a categorized Uh, launching, so to speak, of these people out of the dirt. Uh, again, it was very violent. It was almost um, as though the, the, the dirt was receiving a small explosion or something and breaking open. And I literally saw dirt flying. And I saw this all over the globe. It wasn't just in one area. It wasn't just in, say, the United States. It was all over. And when people would begin to come out, Their appearance, uh, two things about their appearance first astounded me. The first thing was that the clothes they were wearing uh, seemed to be like a choir robe. Uh, they they uh, were kind of like a long dress, so to speak, uh, a cloak almost hanging off them. Uh, but in the middle of the day, uh, it was like uh, uh, those outfits that entertainers wear when they're under the lights and the lights, uh, you know, key in on them and the sequins kind of make the light just shoot off and they glimmer. These people came out in the middle of the day glimmering. Their outfits and their person was brighter than the sun. I, I, I wish I could explain that to you other than I could see the brightness of these people coming out. Él está hablando obviamente la continuidad de la primera resurrección de los muertos en Cristo tal y como lo dice en la palabra. Recuerde que Jesucristo es el primogénito entre los muertos porque ya él recibió el cuerpo de gloria y con él comenzó la primera resurrección cuando Él resucitó entre los muertos, tipo de que la continuidad sigue con nosotros los redimidos. Por lo menos, todos aquellos que mueran antes del arrebatamiento serán parte del arrebatamiento de esta forma como Él lo vio. La Biblia habla de que los que quedemos vivos para ese evento seremos más que bienaventurados porque no veremos muerte. Y esa es la diferencia. Esto mortal se vestirá de inmortalidad. Esto de corrupción se vestirá de incorrupción. Sigamos. Men... Um 
although they had these robes on, appeared to be very, very masculine. Uh, you know, I always used to think that, you know, those robes I had to wear when I graduated from school kind of looked kind of feminine, you know. But these things that these people were wearing were masculine, and yet when women were resurrected, uh, they looked very feminine. Él está hablando obviamente del cuerpo de gloria, porque eso es lo que se va a recibir en esa primera resurrección, los muertos en Cristo y los que meramente seamos glorificados, que no veamos muerte cuando ese evento suceda, porque estaremos vivos, pero seremos llevados a las nubes con Cristo. Sigamos. Again, I'm going to give you the, the, the dream exactly as I saw it. Some things I wish sounded more exciting and other things I wish were just a bit tamer, but I'm going to give it to you exactly as I saw it. These people that came out, it was difficult for me to explain this over the years, older people would come out with the appearance that they were old, but they weren't old. They, you could tell that they had lived a full life, uh, maybe you know, 80 years, 75 years, something like that. But uh, say, for instance, their hair that was lost was, gone, was back again. Um, they looked mature, but they didn't look aged, okay? Young people, I saw a lot of young, young people resurrected. And uh, although they looked very young, they, 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 they weren't very young. They, there was a maturity about them. I, I wish, again, I could clearly define how this appeared uh, during the dream. Um, Te entendemos, mi hermano. A veces no es fácil definirlo. Uno trata lo mejor que puede. <laughs> Sigamos. The, the, the position that I was in at this time didn't give me the allowance to understand these things because of the staunch Catholicism that, that my family and I had practiced. I had never heard of, of Protestant uh, Christian practices. I had never been to a Protestant church. I had never uh, experienced someone witnessing to me the gospel of Jesus Christ uh, and the plan of salvation. I had never read the book of Revelation. And to be very, very frank with you, uh, even to this day, it would have been a lot easier for my life if I would have never been given this dream. Uh, I wanted to just kind of do my thing and uh, carry on with my life. I thought it was going just fine until this began to happen. So just to, to help you understand, I did not ask for this. I've never asked to see the Lord. I've never asked to see angels. I've never asked to have visions. Uh, usually every time I get something like this, I end up getting in some sort of trouble. And so I, I don't really like the trouble that kind of follows you uh, when God starts to show you things. Uh, the other thing that I want to make clear to you is when this was happening, I really didn't understand that it was God at first. And so just to have you understand where I came from, there was no desire for me to experience this dream. Uh, all of a sudden, the people that came out, uh, they, they, just, they just disappeared. I wish I could tell you where I saw them go. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know if they were taken and hidden somewhere. I don't know if they were taken in the clouds because I never saw them go up. I never saw them go away. They just vanished. Bueno, esto hace sentido porque si la Biblia dice en un momento, en un abrir y cerrar de ojo, imagínate, con el ojo humano aún teniendo esta visión, no creo que se pueda ver. Bueno, así que it makes sense. Como dicen aquí en Estados Unidos, hace lógica, hace sentido. Sigamos viendo. Okay. One thing I can tell you is I did not see one person on planet Earth changed like we've read in the Bible where it says, you know, the dead in Christ shall rise first and those which are alive and remain shall be changed. I didn't see anybody at that point when I saw these people come out of the grave changed or get zapped out of planet Earth, meet the Lord in the clouds. I didn't see anything like that. Okay. Qué bueno es ser honesto, eh, el ser honesto eh, en estas revelaciones, porque al ser honesto y detallado, ya yo sé que sí la tuvo. Pero hay que entender, ¿verdad?, que hay partes en las revelaciones. Si Dios decide darnos una revelación, puede ser completa o puede ser desde una perspectiva. Por ejemplo, en el caso de los evangelios, y le pongo, ¿verdad?, un ejemplo que suele confundir a mucho, en el caso de los endemoniados gadarenos. En Mateo te dice que eran dos, sin embargo, en el resto de, la, de los evangelios te dice uno. Pero no es que sea eh, que se contradice la Biblia, sino que te habla de una perspectiva en la cual el testigo presencial habla de los dos, pero los demás te dicen del que estaba más poseído de los dos. Y aquel al que Jesucristo le dijo que fuera y hablara de las grandezas de Dios y que le prohibió que fuera con él y posiblemente era el que estaba peor de los dos. Es como la visión que le está teniendo. Y estos son los obstáculos que Dios permite para que se aprenda a creer por fe. Sigamos escuchando. 
Again, I need to tell you, I had never heard of a rapture. I never, I, as a Catholic, second coming of Christ was not even a dogma of our church. We didn't practice the belief in a second literal coming of Jesus Christ. And so this all was very foreign to me. Él tiene esta visión, vuelvo y repito, y esta revelación cuando él no sabía ni de la Biblia. Vamos, seamos viendo. And uh, as soon as these people uh, disappeared, for a lack of words, wherever they went, mass hysteria began to hit the earth. Uh, people. Bueno, sigamos. Lo, bueno, eh, y si es que tenemos que a veces hacer pausa, porque como le vengo diciendo, parece que hay, hay una cosita por aquí que hay que trabajar bien. Pero lo que podemos ver y con lo, lo, lo que les vengo, verdad, explicando de lo que se viene viendo en el video es que, como nuevamente lo recalco, él no era este cristiano. Él era católico practicante o por lo menos de tan siquiera algo de lo que practicaba y todas estas cosas que él tiene era para ese tiempo, para esa época extrañas, eh, eh, verdad, para el caso de él. Va vamos a seguir dejando verdad por aquí, vamos a seguir hablando y vamos a adelantar en esta ocasión un poquito eso de que de que haya una histeria eh, en masa. Eso es algo de lo que obviamente eh, se puede esperar de lo que sucede en el mundo porque es algo nuevo para el mundo, sobre todo para los que no conocen de Dios y también para los que sí conocen que van a saber que se quedaron. Vamos a seguir viendo. Was working everywhere. Uh, I was able again to see in many quadrants of the earth and there wasn't any one nation that was under this. All of the globe was experiencing this. It was a, a very, very unusual uh, instance that happened it in the dream uh, uh, I wasn't able always to uh, perceive what was going on and yet I was still struggling with my mind during the dream I don't know if you've ever had dreams where you were dreaming things but in your mind you were very much uh, aware that you were dreaming and it was almost kind of like you were two people you know what I mean it's like you were almost divided I was seeing the dream happening, and yet in my mind, I was really not wanting to be a part of this dream. But I, to be very frank with you, I had no choice as this dream was unfolding. And by the way, it lasted the whole night with the interruption at about three o'clock in the morning. I had no control to come out of this dream. Uh, I will tell you that I've learned how to change my dreams. When I go to bed and the devil decides to try to give me a bad dream, I've learned how to tell my mind, Not going there. Nobody's going to chase me with a gun and try to shoot me. I'll just change it. Well, let me tell you, I could not change this one. I wished I could have somehow. Uh, definitely, my life for 20 years, uh, part of it anyways, would have been a whole lot easier. It wasn't easy to receive this. It wasn't easy to sit on it for the amount of time that I've had to sit on it. Uh, my credibility has come into question many, many times because of, well, if this is so powerful, why didn't you share it? Well, I firmly believe that if I would have shared this uh, publicly when I got this, one, nobody would believe me because there was no credibility established in my ministry. And two, it would have probably destroyed me because I didn't possess the character, character of Christ needful to really walk out something like this and understand what uh, all entails with a revelation like this. Paul talked about revelations coming and bringing trials. And so I know that I really wasn't ready for this. Uh, as the mass pandemonium and despair began to permeate society, There was uh, a very unusual event that happened. Television, uh, telephone, radio, and this other unusual communication device, I was able to see into many, many homes in the United States, these white boxes that were about this big that looked to be like televisions. And were, when I saw these, they were in nearly every single home in the U.S., And uh, they would have words written across them, and occasionally it would almost look as though television was playing through them. All of those uh, media devices were shut down for about a two-week period. I know now that what I was seeing was personal computers in people's homes. In 1980, I've done some studies, by the way, about all the things I saw to see if, in fact, I was hearing something from God, because I'm not about to go on national television or around the globe and share this if it's incorrect. I have a ministry of my own right now, and I don't feel like jeopardizing what the Lord has established for the past 17 years. In, in 1980 and 81, there was less than a half a percent of American homes that had a computer in it.
personal computer. IBM was just transitioning from data entry cards into hard drive and, and uh, RAM memory into their computer processes. The one computer that was on the scene at the time was called a Commodore. Some of you might remember that. It was actually a word processor with a very, very small amount of memory. And so I saw these in homes just about everywhere. All these things were shut down. Uh, one of the things that was happening during this uh, hysteria was many, many peoples were asking, where did these people go? What happened? Bueno, hago la pausa. Quizás tengamos que nuevamente buscar, pero este, yo sé que a veces en nuestro Facebook Live se conecta gente tarde, pero recuérdense que nuestras transmisiones en vivo se quedan grabadas. Lo veo porque continuamente estoy mirando preguntas repetidas. El hermano se llama Ken Peters. Lo dijimos al comienzo de nuestra grabación y no tengo que traducir porque están los subtítulos en español y nuevamente si se les ven pequeño, fácil. Vira, mi hijo el teléfono. Mira, cuando viras la imagen en el teléfono, se ve más grande y puedes leer los subtítulos. <risa> bueno, bueno, siga, sigamos, sigamos, sigamos. And all the globes saw this event, uh, or they experienced it afterwards. What I saw in people was that literally nearly everyone I experienced had a great, great look of despair and hopelessness upon their face. Everywhere I went, there was hopelessness. Nobody seemed to be happy about living. Um, you know, I've never experienced that. I've been to a lot of public places where people are bummed out, not happy, not doing well, but not the globe in masses. I don't know, maybe you've seen that. I haven't. Uh, so this hysteria brought a complete hopelessness and total perplexity to just about everyone. The television communications were down for a period of time. Again, people have asked me, well, what do you think caused that? I I'm really not positive, but I would like to put something on the overhead tonight uh, to show you an article. And for many of you uh, Prophecy Club folks here tonight, this, this is a new information to you. For some of the visitors that might be here, this may be very new information. This was an article. Let me move this down just a hair. This was an article that was given to me two weeks before this tour started. Let me share with you a few details. I did not want to take this tour, okay? I really did not want to connect to the Prophecy Club. Uh, when I got the prophecy for them, the Lord had told me some things about this ministry and how everything they were saying was about the end times. And I'm thinking, no, 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 I don't want to go there. I've, booted, I've been booted out of enough churches. I've been, I've been persecuted enough for my position. I'm not going to hook up with anybody that's going to just completely declare the end as they really believe it. Now, you know, uh, all of us have to leave the fear of man sooner or later in our lives. Amen? So uh, that's what I had to do. And uh, when I was praying about this tour, the Lord said he would give me daily a sign everywhere I went, a sign in the natural that what I had seen was truly him. We walked in the airport today. We were coming through the terminal and he showed me uh, uh, a Humvee sitting in the main area of the terminal of this airport. And by the way, it was the exact type that I saw. The one that I'm going to show you tonight on the overheads later, it's not the same one. Prácticamente lo que está es dando, obviamente, las pruebas de que tiene una revelación antes de que las cosas pasaron. O sea, él fue transportado al futuro y él explica sobre las computadoras para el año 1980-1981. Él tiene esta visión en el 1981 y él cuando ve que hay esta histeria, se va a la televisión, se va todo. Obviamente se va a desconectar todo y vio la desesperanza en los rostros de la gente e inclusive también ve la existencia de los Homer. Antes de que existan. Sigamos. This article was a reprint. Uh, actually, I have the original copy if you would like it. Uh, I can get it to Prophecy Club and, and you could uh, request that. They'll, you know, get it to you. Uh, this was in the uh, 1991 uh, Santa Barbara, California news press paper. This has to do with a single high altitude nuclear blast by a rogue nation which could, would bombard the continental United States with electromagnetic rays, crippling civil and military electronics from light bulbs to computers, uh, military experts warned Congress Wednesday. Uh, such an explosion would unleash electromagnetic pulse. I'm going to move this up just a hair. Would release an electromagnetic pulse that would erase computer data in banks, stock market, halt cars, trucks, shut down electricity in the lower 48 states. 
This is interesting to me because I prophesied a long time ago that Alaska would not experience the judgment that the 48 states would receive. I got this paper and I thought, oh, that's interesting. The pulse would last only a fraction of a second. Our civilian telephone, electricity, communications, and electronic plants are all naked to our nuclear-armed enemies, said Lowell Wood, a physicist with the Lawrence Livermore Laboratories. Even a modest single explosion EMP attack on the U.S. would likely devastate us as a modern post-industrial nation. i move this up just again a bit. Any nuclear-capable nation, including Russia, China, and North Korea, I'm going to talk to you tonight about North Korea, some specifics, uh, I have some inside information that the Lord has allowed me to see about North Korea and China. Uh, uh, any n nuclear capable nation, including these nations, could cripple the U.S. military machine and lay waste to modern American civilization, said Wood, who also is a consultant to the Defense Department. Again, that's an article from the 1991 Santa Barbara News Press. Bueno, adelantemos un poquito, ¿verdad?, eh, sobre el caso de el sueño o la revelación. This o individual la was rallying the globe. De momento, pues obviamente él después dice que luego de que pasa todo este evento y el mundo cambia por causa del evento, del arrebatamiento, lo cual es lógico, porque imagínate, el mundo cambió por la pandemia, que sería como ese evento que la Biblia dice, él ve cómo pasa y rápidamente comienza a ver que cuando se restauran los medios de comunicación, hay una persona que comienza a promocionarse como la salida para todo. Ya usted sabrá quién es. It was very, very frightening. Uh, almost immediately, he began to communicate through large screen televisions that were strategically placed everywhere the general populace met. Think back for me for just a few moments. 1980, 1981. Large screens televisions? No. Él también en la visión había visto los televisores que ahora nosotros obviamente tenemos. Eh, mire, mi hermano, bueno, yo no sé qué es lo que pasa con algunos o es que les gusta que los lleven de la mano. Si no se ven las letras, gire o vire el, el, el celular para que la vea más grande. Yo estoy consciente de que no todo el mundo habla en inglés y que las transmisiones las hacemos en, en español. Deje de tenerle miedo al inglés. Si hay letras abajo en el español, usted las puede leer y cuando las lea sabrá lo que el hombre está diciendo. O sea, entonces, ¿cómo hacemos para seguir mostrando cosas en el caso del inglés? Porque hay un mundo allá afuera que no solo es en el español, mi hermano, me perdona. Yo no sé cómo es que lo llevan algunos pastores, pero por eso es que algunos pastores o de estas los engañan, porque quieren que todos se los hagan y creen ciegamente en todo. No, mi hermano, usted tiene que poner de su parte también. O sea, ¿cómo es que yo les tengo que decir que viren el teléfono para que vean las letras más grandes? Bueno, si el teléfono es más chiquito, ya eso culpa mía no es. Yo trato de traerle el mensaje, usted resuelva. Vamos a seguir viendo por aquí, porque él... Esta persona, él ve, inclusive hasta cuando estos televisores de ahora no existían, y él lo me menciona en su testimonio. Vamos a, vamos a tener que buscar, porque pues otra vez, en verdad, tenemos que seguirle dando lógica al caso del video. Estamos teniendo algunas pausas, y yo me tengo que, parece que detener a cada rato para decir a cada rato lo mismo. Tengo que detenerme si se conectan tarde, tengo que detenerme a decirle el nombre de la persona que está hablando, tengo que detenerme a decirles que viren el teléfono, tengo que detenerme a decirle Yo sé que no hablan inglés mucho, ahí están las traducciones. Resuelva, mi hermano. Vamos a, vamos a adelantar, ¿verdad?, por aquí en el caso del testimonio, donde él también ve cuando el anticristo se está como quiera eh, manifestando. Eh, sigamos por aquí. En many, many homes in the United States, these white boxes that were about this big. Esta parte la habíamos visto. Vamos a adelantar, ¿verdad?, por acá. Vamos a ver por aquí. Él habla sobre, ok. Um, aquí these were people that had accepted his message that he was telling them about Jesus Christ. Um, a very unusual thing was occurring at this time in the earth. Babies were being abandoned just about everywhere. Uh, almost on every street corner were babies abandoned, left in their little uh, baby seats or their baby uh, baskets. And th this was strange because they would be from infancy up to about maybe uh, 16, 18 months, something like that. I could tell that there wasn't any babies over the age of two. And I don't know if that's because, you know, children, when they hit two, they start to change. You know, they have some kind of, a, I call it rebellion or something. You know, you tell them not to touch the cookies and they look at you and take it anyways, you know. You remember when that started happening to your kids? 
Well, we didn't pick up any kids like that for some reason. I don't know. Maybe God was sparing us. I have no idea. But we began to pick up children everywhere. And we began to take care of these children. I kind of joined up with this group of people because they were the only ones that seemed to have any peace at this time anywhere in the whole earth that I'd experienced. Now, some very unusual things were happening with this group of people. It was amazing to me how they could meet people's physical needs. They would always run into people who were in need, and they would be able to meet their needs and then somehow lead them to Christ. Now, I didn't know how to do any of this yet because I had just kind of hooked up. Él está hablando de los cristianos que se quedaron. Eh, parece que va a venir de acuerdo a como él soñó, de acuerdo a como Dios se lo reveló en, en, después del arrebatamiento, un abandono masivo eh, también de niños. Eh, de que se van los bebés o no, obviamente los bebés en el arrebatamiento, yo estimo que sí se van porque no tienen conocimiento de pecado, no pueden elegir entre el bien y el mal, pero la cosa es que después del arrebatamiento, después del evento, después, la gente va a seguir reproduciendo, mi hermano. Entonces los bebés iban a seguir existiendo. Los que existan y los que se engendren después del arrebatamiento es obvio. El arrebatamiento es un evento uno. No pasa todos los días. Sigamos. With this man, in the dream, my wife had also become a Christian, a believer in Jesus Christ. And we were kind of hooked up with this man, kind of helping him out. I, I, I don't know if I had a job, to be honest with you. I, I don't ever remember working in the dream, although there was a couple occasions that I made business transactions. So it may have been that I was working and it just wasn't revealed to me as an aspect uh, that was important in the dream. I just don't know. Again, there's been many times I've asked to know certain things and some things the Lord told me someday I'll reveal all of it to you. And, you know, I don't know, maybe someday that will happen. I can tell you this, the man that I saw on the television, the man that could do the signs and wonders and fix all the problems, I will tell you this tonight, I will never forget his face, ever. As long as I live, I will never forget his face. Some people have been downloading information to me on my uh, email and downloading pictures of different people that are claiming uh, who they are. And let me just tell you, it's none of them. None of them. Not yet. El anticristo. Yo les he dicho que nadie sabrá quién es hasta después del arrebatamiento. Si usted lo quiere conocer, se puede quedar. Claro, él vio a alguien que no va a ser manifiesto en estos tiempos. Ese video es del año 2000. La experiencia es del 1981. Because I will never forget this individual's face. His face was almost supernatural in appearance. He was almost too perfect. He, he uh, was, for lack of terms, he was the most handsome man I had ever seen. And I just want you to know I'm a very happily married heterosexual, okay? <laughs> When I say he was a handsome man, I don't mean that in a strange manner. I just mean to tell you that this man had everything going together for him. Everything. He, he, I was telling Stan that he had kind of a chiseled look to his face. And uh, everything about his appearance was almost perfect. And when he spoke, there was just a, a very strange quality about him. It's funny, many years later, I read a scripture about the Lord Jesus Christ uh, from Isaiah the prophet that said that Jesus uh, had no comeliness or, or, or uh, features that we would desire to behold him. In other words, Jesus was not some handsome uh, specimen of a male. He was an average, rugged, uh, probably uh, different looking person. He wasn't uh, the kind of guy that would be voted, you know, most least or most likely to succeed on the, uh, on the, the GQ, so to speak, uh, charts. Bueno, es claro que el hermano estaba empezando, verdad, en su ministerio. Y yo quiero, y he aclarado esto varias veces, pero sí la Biblia nos habla que el Señor Jesucristo es hermoso. Tu hermosura mejor que la de los hijos de los hombres. Para parafrasear un poco el texto, la hermosura la perdió cuando fue crucificado y a eso se refiere, verdad, el caso de Isaías. Pero si el anticristo va a ser un falso Cristo, tiene que parecerse en todos los aspectos a lo que fue Cristo. Y uno de los aspectos va a ser atractivo, porque Cristo sí lo era. But this guy that I saw was, he fulfilled that perfectly. And isn't it amazing that the Antichrist would be the antithesis to Jesus? That he would have such a persona that it would be just the opposite of Jesus Christ. Although he was not actually prideful, he was very, very brash. 
but he still carried the ability and uh, charisma about him to levy people into his situations. Um, at this point, we began to really connect with this man and his followers. And some other things that were very strange to me in my thinking was that somehow he seemed, this group of people seemed to happen quite frequently that things would just work out for them in the most unusual ways. Now, I, I, and during the dream, I didn't know what was going on. I did not know that God got involved in the affairs of men. I didn't know that the big God of the universe would come down and, you know, be actually interested in, in the affairs of man. Lo que usted ve en la evidencia y en todo lo que él define, lo más asombroso es cómo él sueña en la época que no conocía absolutamente nada y aún conociendo más o menos allí, el hombre habla con precisión, por lo menos en el caso de las cosas que soñó y esa es la manera en la que podemos hacer un ejercicio para saber cuando una revelación es real o no. Eh, pero nuevamente le recalco, en el caso del Señor Jesucristo, sí dice, sí dice, y que la hermosura de él, él entregó hasta su hermosura. El Señor Jesucristo sí era hermoso, el Señor Jesucristo sí era guapo. Lo que obviamente mi hermano le destruyó su cuerpo fue todo lo que pasó camino a la cruz. Eso es lo que habla Isaías, pero el Señor Jesucristo sí. Y una y otra vez la Biblia lo, lo, lo recalca. Yo les puedo recomendar un video de nosotros que habla sobre esto del caso de Jesús, porque debido a las profecías de Isaías, la gente a veces se confunde. Eh, el Señor Jesucristo hasta su hermosura la entregó. Sí, sí se distinguía. Sigamos. As, as, as I grew up religiously, I, I didn't see him in that aspect. I saw him as a very busy God out there, and he had a lot to do, and probably I wasn't important enough because I wasn't a pope or a cardinal or a, a, a saint somewhere, or, you know, I wasn't one of those people, so probably uh, I was last on the list. And I know a lot of people feel that way about God right now. But I saw very unusual events happening with this band of followers. Food would multiply, very unusual things would happen. They would pray for people and people would be healed. Uh, just very, very strange things uh, that was abstract to my thinking. Now at this point in the dream, things really began to shift. And what happened was, I was on my way to the bank to make a business transaction. Several things uh, in the dream I was revealed. For one, uh, let me see if I have something with me. Yeah, I do. Uh, I, I saw this money in 1980. I saw the money that has the big pictures of the different uh, figures on it. In 1980, this money wasn't even talked about yet. Another o sea, él también lo vio. Discúlpenos, que, discúlpenos por ahí, ¿verdad? Que se nos salió este, como que ponchar ahí a un, o, o mostrar ahí un comentario de una persona que bloqueamos. Eh, yo aquí, esto aquí, este canal les quiero acordar, les quiero decir que es cristiano. Aquí no se hacen, no se admiten promociones, mucho menos lecturas del tarot. Había alguien ahí por aquí, mientras estamos aquí en el en vivo en Facebook promocionando y que lecturas del tarot y ya lo bloqueé. Mire, váyase con su tarot por ahí. ahí se, seguimos, vamos a seguir. Oye, hermano, está cañón. <risa> seguimos, mira, él vio unos billetes que para ese tiempo no existían. Another thing I saw shortly after this money was that the picture of the individual moved over a little bit and there was a blank space on here. And I was shown in the vision that the cash would carry bands in it that could be traced as to who was transacting the cash. You see, it's not just enough to know where your checking account goes and your electronic, say, visa transactions. They want to know where you're spending cash, too, because it's the ultimate control issue. And I saw this. And you ask yourself a question if you think I'm incorrect tonight. Have you been able to go just to any local printer and say, um, for instance, Kinko's, uh, I'd like you to print 500 of my checks up? Can't do it, folks. Your checks are banded with pertinent information so that your checks can be traced. All you have to do is put your checks under an ultraviolet light and you'll find this to be true. Checks are already being traced. They're already being tracked. I saw money that was being tracked. Yesterday, somebody sent us some information that the rainbow money is going to be in full effect by 2003. Right now, uh, within the next month, they're going to release the tens, fives, and ones for the new money. And I'm... Imagínate, ese es un video del 2000, pero esa manera de rastrear o de información ya en nuestra era de redes sociales, ya tenemos más o menos la idea. Pero yo lo voy a dejar para que usted vea lo que él predicó en ese año telling you we're right on track we're on a fast track actually 
with these events happening. So I'm on my way to make a business transaction. And a very unusual thing happened. There was an earthquake while I was going to the bank. I was just entering the bank. And uh, across the street from my bank was a large, tall, about seven-story building. It could be a little taller. I, I should have actually checked this one out. And by the way, everything I, I'll tell you is documented. You can check with people and names and situations if you're interested. This was, this was a triangle-looking building and it was all glass in its appearance. If you think back to architecture in the early 1980s, especially 1980-81, they had just started to use all glass elevations on, on, on commercial buildings. Él habla de un edificio que él vio eh, que era algo del futuro que ya para ahora, verdad, es algo más, eh, más común, esos edificios con, eh, con cristales. Eh, y que no existía, él después lo dice, pues yo conozco el testimonio, él dice que después ese edificio él lo vio construido exactamente en el lugar donde él soñó. It was just being introduced. Drive around any big city now and all glass buildings are the normal thing. It didn't used to be. Well, they were in this dream, this earthquake hit and began to shake this glass building and it fell over and killed about 200 people. This mi hermano, es, es obviamente eh, algo normal pensar que si la Biblia te habla que antes de la segunda venida visible vendrá un terrible terremoto mundial que sucederá al unísono en todo el mundo y que las ciudades de las naciones cayeron, es obviamente que después de los principios de dolores y después del arrebatamiento van a seguir sucediendo pequeños temblores y eso es lo que él vio. Eh, de, este, de este testimonio, lo que yo les puedo seguir añadiendo es que realmente pues, es muy impresionante eh, cómo hay algunas cosas. O sea, usted ve que él realmente, ah, eh, desde que tiene la visión, no tiene eh, el, el conocimiento eh, bíblico para exponer algunas cosas, pero esto, como vengo diciendo, es un ejercicio que se puede hacer eh, para usted ver cuando le están mintiendo o cuando no. Eh, en el caso, ¿verdad?, de las visiones, cuando vienen, en este caso, eh, a ser reales. Eh, déjenme un momentito, ¿verdad?, mostrarles aquí. Nuevamente repetimos que la persona con la que estamos haciendo este video o que, de, de, que está dando esta, este testimonio se llama Ken Peters. Luego le queremos decir nuevamente, si no ven las letras pequeñas, gira el teléfono para que se vean más grandes, porque si yo pongo más grande ahora mismo en la grabación en el en vivo, eh, toda, todo, todo esto acá después van a salir encima subtítulos en inglés que van a tapar los subtítulos en español cuando quede la grabación. Eh, por eso es que lo estoy haciendo, pues obviamente eh, así. Entonces, eh, nuevamente les explico, él tiene esta visión eh, después eh, de que sucede el arrebatamiento donde se levanta, parece que un grupo de creyentes que luego se convierten, él se une a ellos, él vio algunas cosas que antes no existían para esa época del 1981 cuando él tiene ese sueño y eh, obviamente comienza a decir que suceden unos ciertos milagros, etcétera, etcétera, y además terremotos. Sigamos. Night, about the last two big ones that hit California and the Lord told me that they would come. He told me one would happen when the whole world's eyes were upon it. The whole world's eyes were upon the 1988 World Series in Oakland, California. And he told me if my people don't begin to repent and begin to call out upon me, the next earthquakes will bring massive destruction and loss of lives. I watched civic and spiritual leaders say how we will rally in the power of our human spirit to overcome these obstacles. We will? I don't think so, folks. You know, I, I drive that Bay Bridge a lot to minister up in the Bay Area of California. If that earthquake would have hit any sooner, it would have killed thousands upon thousands of people on that bridge because it totally collapsed into the other. I was also recently involved in the Northridge quake uh, in 1995. I was in Ventura, California at the time driving down the highway when it hit. And uh, it was a very frightening thing. By the way, I don't know if you know this. I do know this for a fact. Uh, that the earthquake epicenter, the very spot of the earthquake, destroyed the biggest producer of pornography in the whole world. Amen. Okay, that's, that's something to say amen about, but I need... Eso fue en ese año, mire bien. I need to tell you, guess what's happened since? They've moved all their facilities to Chatsworth, California, and now they're producing twice what they produced in 1995. I heard spiritual leaders in the Los Angeles, San Fernando Valley say, that these earthquakes are not the judgment of God, they're mishaps by nature. <laughs> They said this publicly. 
And they wanted to try to tell people that these things were not the judgments of God. If you'd read your Bible, it's very, very clear that Jesus said that earthquakes are a sign of judgment. We'll talk about some things in a bit about that. The earthquake hit, and there was multiple uh, millions of lives lost. Millions. I mean, ahora, literally millions of lives. Ahora él sigue hablando del sueño que tuvo. Estaba dando unos ejemplos de lo que sucedió, ¿verdad?, para aquella época. I've never heard of an earthquake where millions of people have been killed, ever. Uh, the, the world was completely stunned. The devastation of property and loss was beyond comprehension. It could not be measured. Some regions were so destroyed that they never bothered to send uh, rescue teams in. That's how devastated they were. I have some good friends, and including myself, that knew when God was going to touch Japan with a quake. Uh, two of my friends got the exact same number of the quake, and one of my friends gave them the day the quake would happen. One of my friends was ministering there, uh, a mighty prophetess of the Lord, and she said, an earthquake's going to hit here. And she said, I'm afraid, get me out of the building right now. She thought it was going to hit at that very moment. It actually hit two weeks later, but they said, if you're ministering to us and you're a prophet of the living God, then, then you need to pray for us and pray for our people's homes and their buildings. And so she went out with oil and poured oil over every church, every place that people were willing to allow her to pray and the Kobe earthquake Japan uh, Japan quake never touched any of those buildings y sin embargo están los calvinistas y más por allá diciendo que el aceite supuestamente es superstición el diablo les está robando la bendición mi hermano por esa gente tenga cuidado con los predicadores de hoy en día porque se hacen muy teólogos y yo no sé dónde cursaron teología de los disparates que dicen sigamos Some of those buildings were parts of other buildings. They were connected, and one side of the building would fall. Everywhere that she had prayed was spared. None of the people and the families that she prayed for lost lives. None. She goes to Japan now, and needless to say, it's like she's God. They roll out the red carpet now. You know, when you're spared because of a prophetic word, your mind changes about the things of God. Don't ever put your eyes on people. Put your eyes on the Lord. This was very unusual. This destruction uh, was global. It reached the whole globe, folks. Now, I want to tell you some things that began to happen at this point. This earthquake that hit caused a massive change in weather patterns. At this moment, what began to happen was the normal weather patterns completely changed. The, the, the patterns for winter became summer, summer became winter, and you might have a day of snow and a day of heat. The world was in total chaos in its weather patterns. Predicting weather was totally uh, impossible. You, there, it, was, it was just uh, useless to try to forecast weather. Predictions did not work. Some very unusual things began to happen almost immediately. Crops began to perish, droughts and famine. I was able to see all over the globe the most fertile areas, the most fertile farming areas. I lived uh, at the time of this dream in the most fertile farming area in the whole world, the San Joaquin Valley of California. These areas were totally destroyed with drought and famine. Places that were once fertile were now arid deserts. It was almost hard to comprehend what I was seeing, and it was almost immediate. It was almost like somebody just took things and twisted the whole order. The thing that I tell you that was strange to me is that weather seemed to have its own mind. I, I, don't, I don't know how that would work, but I've heard some things from different people in the Prophecy Club about different issues, about how they're manipulating weather. But this weather was manipulated by the earth being shook from its axis. You say, how do you know that? I was above it and I saw it shaking. I saw the whole earth rocking around like it was a drunk person trying to walk. It was very, very frightening. To Escuche esa revelación y compare con las cosas que ya sabemos de nuestro tiempo. Escuche bien, mi hermano. To me. Can you imagine being in this dream, not knowing what I know now biblically, not ever have re read, reading this stuff or ever have anybody witness to me about these things and seeing this happen? It was just uh, incredible to me. It was frightening to me. And I, I just couldn't uh, begin to express to you how uh, hopeless or uh, empty I felt about seeing all these things happening. <clears throat> Many times I wished I could have woke up and just pretended that this wasn't happening. Now, uh, right about at the time that this earthquake hit, very unusual things began to happen with law. I began to see local municipalities, and no longer were police departments the enforcers of the law of municipalities, but military police driving very...
Nuevamente, eh, el video tiene subtítulos abajo. Si no pueden leerlo regularmente como lo ven en su teléfono, miren el teléfono, por favor. Yo no puedo llevar de la mano a todo el mundo. Aquí yo sé que se habla español. Así que en, la, en los subtítulos está meramente la traducción. Traten de trabajar las cosas por sí mismos o conecten el Facebook al televisor para que lo puedan ver más amplio. Very unusual looking vehicles that I now know to be called Humvees. I'm going to put this on the screen and talk to you a little bit about this vehicle. Can you see that good? Should I come up a hair or are you okay? We're okay. I'm going to do like Stan does here. Let's see. Hey, look at that. Oh, I have to hold it. Okay. These, uh, this is classy. I like this. These vehicles I saw looked a lot like this vehicle, except that uh, they weren't green. And uh, by the way, this was brought up on an internet uh, advertisement for me because I began to tell people what I saw. And uh, I, I, the first time I saw one of these, by the way, was on CNN in 1991 during the Gulf War. I don't know, you might have seen them sooner than that, but that was the first time I saw it. By the way, I was watching the report on the Gulf War because I was comparing what television was telling me in comparison to what the Lord had shown me in prayer. I know some things about Saddam Hussein. I know some things about some people that even Prophecy Club hasn't heard yet. And I'll share them with you tonight. This vehicle that I saw was black. They were on just about every corner of every main thoroughfare. The only difference is, like the one I saw in the airport today, I think it was today, yeah, it was today. Man, I've really been going. Keep me in prayer. I just want to get home tomorrow. The, the one I saw in the airport today was amazing because it was almost the exact replica. And by the way, it was $94,000. Uh, this one was 72,000. These are the yuppie cars in California, by the way. I guess they make these, I heard, here in Indiana somewhere. Isn't it amazing? You Indianans are corrupting. O sea, él, él vio en su sueño y en su revelación del arrebatamiento, ¿verdad? De estos carros que solamente vendrían eh, a, como tal, a existir en el futuro. Eh, vamos a ver, ¿verdad? Lo que él dice después, cómo la policía se viene a estar sustituyendo por una policía mini, militar internacional. When it came on the air, I heard the Lord say, look at the television. I don't like television. And so uh, what happened was these guys were uh, fighting this uh, skirmish in Sierra Leone, and they were wearing blue, baby blue, powder blue ball caps. And the Lord said, I told you I'd give you a sign in every place you'd go to show you. I don't know what the blue ball caps meant, by the way, uh, when I saw them or the blue helmets, but I clearly know now who will be the policeman. I'm, I'm wide aware uh, of who will be in charge. Now, this, uh, this system of these police uh, was actually quite peaceful. They weren't rude. They weren't uh, mean to people. They weren't uh, obnoxious. I didn't see any looters or anybody getting shot or anything like that. They seemed to be peaceful, kind of parked at every corner. One thing that was happening is that you could not cross state lines at this time without papers. You had to have current papers to cross state lines. That was very, very strange to me. You know, if, matter of fact, uh, if it hadn't have probably been for Prophecy Club, I would have probably never really believed that part of my dream. I, I... Sí, parece que eh, progresivamente van a estar, según lo que él soñó, progresivamente van a estar limitando los territorios, posiblemente sea cuando el anticristo logre tener más poder, no permitir que la gente pueda huir. Y sí, es como el caso de los cascos de la ONU. I don't think I would have ever believed that our country would become a place where you can't cross border to border without papers. Estado en estado. Mire eso. Prove papers. But I saw it. And it was astounding to me. This new leader began to be on television again, and he was not resisted in the implementation of any of his policies. Not one. No one stood up to challenge him. No one in America started a revolution. No one. There was no resistance whatsoever. Not on a grassroots level, not on a national level. No one. And you know what's amazing to me? In the 20 years from this dream, I'm totally convinced now that that's exactly what's going to happen. Because you can look at most of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, and they're totally asleep right now. If you start telling them end time things like this, they, they label you as a doomsday fanatical nutcase, you know, what are you... A 
Mira, y eso fue en el año 2000, pero mira ahora, porque para esa época no habían salido todavía los apostolobos de la prosperidad diciéndoles religiosos a los que predican de la realidad bíblica. Mira, mira, mira eso. <laughs> you, you one of those guys that are going to tell us that the, the end's going to come upon us and we're not going to get snatched out of here or get to get out of here without a little bit of problem. You know, just read your Bible. God didn't take Noah out of the earth. He put an ark around him. God delivered Lot from Sodom. Bueno, es claro, ¿verdad? Lo que él está diciendo relacionado a todas las cosas que pasarán sobre la policía este, militar internacional, eh, sobre el caso de las restricciones que van a hablar, eh, que van a ver, o sea, de, to de, de todo esto. O sea, está hablándolo de forma clara y que nadie se le va a poner al anticristo. Eh, él pues obviamente está diciendo nadie comenzó una revolución, nadie y así mismo lo compara con el caso de la iglesia que está dormida. Imagínate, eh, la verdadera iglesia es la que se va y es ahora estando en la iglesia. Los que hablamos la verdad nos persiguen, eh, nos tratan mal porque no estamos comulgando con sus ridiculeces. Entonces, ¿qué será cuando todo ese montón de cabezones se queden donde no va a haber unción de nada, pero de nada para para nada? Sigamos viendo. Municipalities. But military police driving very unusual looking vehicles that I now know to be called Humvees. I'm going to put this on the screen and talk to you a little bit about this vehicle. O sea, él ve cosas demasiado, demasiado evidente. Este, mira, el anticristo no era resistido y la policía es, es sustituida por una policía internacional. Not resisted in the implementation of any of his policies. Not one. No one stood up to challenge him. No one in America started a revolution. No one. There was no resistance whatsoever. Not on a grassroots level, not on a national level. No one. And you know what's amazing to me? In the 20 years from this dream, I'm totally convinced now that that's exactly what's going to happen. Because you can look at most of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, and they're totally asleep right now. Right. If you start telling them end time things like this, they, they label you as a doomsday fanatical Nutcase, you know, what are you, you, you one of those guys that are going to tell us that the, the end's going to come upon us and we're not going to get snatched out of here or get to get out of here without a little bit of problem? You know, just read your Bible. God didn't take Noah out of the earth. He put an ark around him. God delivered Lot from Sodom but still destroyed the place. He didn't take him into the clouds. Jesus said so many times himself, even in the high priestly prayer, he said that, hey, listen, Father, I pray that they might be one as we're one. But Father, I pray that you take them not out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil one. You know, he's the one who said, he who endures to the end shall be saved. You know, and, and I'm sorry, but a whole lot of Christians right now think that we can just get out of here without it being a little tough. Could you imagine, honestly, if Jesus would come back to take his church right now? Terrible. Y ese, ese es el año 2000. Imagínate si estuviera viendo para ese momento que hizo el video todas las cosas que estamos viendo ahora. Sigamos. The changes took place almost instantly and with complete ease. Complete ease. Uh, there was peaceful martial law, as I said. Military police were everywhere, and they knew everyone's whereabouts. I found out how they began to know this. See, I, I didn't understand this at first, and it was revealed to me. I, I asked myself questions as I was processing this dream. How could this happen so quickly? See, I'm a historian. I love to read about history, especially uh, American history. You know, uh, our forefathers fought those type of things. But right now, where are our forefathers? Where are men and women that are willing to stand up and say, hey, wait a minute here. This is not the direction we're choosing to go. Think about it. I mean, we all ought to pinch each other tonight. It's, I thought it was we the people. What about all of us? You know, when are we going to rise up and say enough of this? You know, see, I'm not the only one who's walking in the fear of man. When are you going to rise up and tell your church that we're sick and tired of the truth not being preached? We want the truth preached. And if you don't, men of God, don't preach the truth, we'll pray that God will bring some who will. Well, that ought to get you excited. It did in every other meeting I said it in, but that's okay. Are uh, you trying to behave for cameras or what? You afraid they're going to pan and show your face and now they got you? The government's got you? 
He had you a long time ago, folks. I'll just tell you that right now. Yeah, thanks, brothers. There must be some ex-Catholics down there. I knew my friends would start speaking out sooner or later. <laughs> a lot of questions I asked myself. Where were the ideals of our founding fathers? How could this happen in America? You know, I've heard of a lot of other nations having a coup attempts and governments overthrown, but it was usually through war. There was not even a bullet fired. Now, as time progressed in the dream, I was given the ability to realize by being in homes that television sets not only broadcast and transmitted programming, but they now had the capacity to actually send signals about you in your living room. See, I never really thought that could happen until an electronic engineer told me, Ken, anything that's electronic, that's, de that's designed, can do the reverse of its design. Anything. Your automobile can drive forward, it can go backwards. If you can receive a signal, you can, thank you, Lord, you can send a signal. Now listen, I was able to see that television sets were actually watching people in their homes monitoring their movements, monitoring their conversations. They showed me in the dream, or I was shown in the dream, that the television didn't even have to be on, it just needed to be plugged in. Guess what I found out? That televisions made after 1992 can in fact watch you. Y eso que en ese tiempo todavía no estaba lo de las redes sociales. Ay, mi hermano, pues le revelaron solo una partecita. Sigamos viendo aquí un poco, ¿verdad?, este testimonio. Vamos a ver qué más vio en, él, en, ese, en ese sueño. The Secretary of the Interiors that was de, given déjeme, to me out of my garage. Déjeme adelantar, ¿verdad?, un poquito para acá, porque hay unas cositas muy, muy... Eh, o sea, él, él meramente ve todo lo que sucede en ese sueño que venía en el futuro. Deja ver. And amazing things are beginning to happen, like vegetables growing in biblical proportions. I'm going down there with a friend of mine that's actually here in the meeting tonight uh, to do some more missionary work at the end of June, and I will send back to Prophecy Club digital videotapes of me holding... Bueno, yo, verdad, antes de proseguir aquí, yo le voy a preguntar una cosa a ustedes, a los que se están eh, conectando, a los que están comentando. Yo sé, vuelvo y repito, o sea, no sé si es que no oyen, no sé es que si después se conectan, no sé a qué hora se están conectando, cómo es la cosa... Yo sé que usted no habla inglés, amigo mío o amiga. Lea los subtítulos. No se hagan los que no saben. Ustedes, ustedes, Dios les dio inteligencia. Entonces, meramente úsela. Están los subtítulos, lean los subtítulos. Si usted quiere, pues entonces, mire. Después, entonces, si yo pusiera, como vengo diciendo, ve, ve, ve cómo se dan las cosas, como vengo diciendo al principio de la transmisión. Si yo lo pusiera a él, hablando en español, en traducción en español, después dicen, ay, pero ¿cómo sabemos si dijo eso? Ve, ve, ve lo que le estoy diciendo, amigo. Mire, o amiga, o que si usted no se asuste del inglés, yo sé que aquí se habla en español. En español están los subtítulos y usted sabe cuántas veces tengo que hacer pausa para decirle que están los subtítulos en español. Yo sé que no hablan inglés, por el amor de Dios. Sigamos aquí. These vegetables myself. Phenomenal, phenomenal. Carrots as big around as a man's arm. Huge, that tastes wonderful. Corn stalks that grow the biggest ears of corn you could ever imagine. Cauliflowers that take two men to hold. Heads of lettuce that are gigantic. They're sending to Alma Longa right now scientists from all over the earth because the whole scientific community knows about this and they want to know what these Guatemalans have done to the dirt. Él habla del lugar, ¿verdad? También de, de Guatemala, que era Alma Longa, donde todo el mundo se convirtió y las cárceles se cerraron. Y producen, pues obviamente, eh, eh, los vegetales y las frutas más grandes que inclusive hasta fueron científicos a ver qué era lo que realmente estaba pasando por ahí. Bueno, parte de la predicación que él incluyó en el mensaje de la revelación, eh, pues obviamente de su sueño. Yo estoy por aquí adelantando un poquito. Vamos a ver aquí qué, qué más él dice del sueño. By the way, this started with a voluntary implementation first. You, you, you did it voluntarily first. This man told me you ought to get yours done real soon to avoid the hassle because soon everyone, they say, will have to have this to conduct business. 
Now, what I want to show you is this is a poor drawing because we, we weren't artists, and I'm a stick guy drawer, so <laughs> please bear with me tonight. I will explain what the one I saw looked like. On the web of the right hand, this individual had what looked to be like the sunburst of Mexico. Anybody ever see the sunburst of Mexico? You know, it looks like a sun with a face on it. That's what this kind of appeared like, except these, these rays right here, they didn't look like that at all. If you could picture in your mind the sunburst, and then all of a sudden, like a hologram, beams were coming out of it as rays, okay? This was another palm. This is upside down. I don't know why that happened. We made a mistake. Actually, I didn't do this, but I'll take responsibility because I don't want the, my friend to get the bad rap on this. I love that guy. So, yeah, I do. I don't want to tell about him. This hand actually was facing just like the right hand was here, the same direction. <clears throat> Excuse me, it was inside of this, and there was another emblem just like this one on this hand like you see in the web. Okay, this guy was very excited about this. He was very happy because he said, hey, we won't have to use these stupid cards anymore. At this point in the dream, we were already at the point of using cards to transact everything. You say, how do you know that this will happen? I hosted about 18 missionaries, high school missionaries from British Columbia three months ago at my house. Uh, and they're on their way to Mexico. They were bummed out because they couldn't use their Canadian smart cards in America. For convenience sake, Canada is getting rid of cash because the Canadians don't like carrying the loonies and the toonies. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Those are big, heavy coins that are a pain in the rear end to carry around because they're very, very heavy. And so Básicamente, él está hablando de la evolución de lo que para ese año no se había, verdad, visto tanto como ahora de lo del dinero en efectivo y él vio la marca. Y ahí, pues, estaba hablando de lo que él vio en el sueño y cómo la vio que era y la describe en parte como algo, parece que el emblema de algo parecido al sol mexicano y etcétera, como... Como él la vio, él más o menos describe en lo que él vio en el sueño. Es really the end of the world. At this point, I began to run to my house as fast as I could. Eso es él en el sueño. While I was running, I want to read to you what I heard in my spirit. I didn't know it was my spirit at that time. If you have a Bible, if you want to turn there tonight, <clears throat> I'll read very quickly from Revelations 13. I didn't know these were scriptures. I was hearing this inside of my stomach. Now, again, I didn't know what the stomach did at that time. Now I know that's where your spirit man lives. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. He causes all, verse 16, chapter 13 of Revelations, he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, to receive uh, a mark in their right hand or their foreheads that no man might buy or sell, save that he has the mark, the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of man. That number is six hundred and three score and six, okay? Or, yeah, three score and six. Now, I'm running as fast as I can back to my house because I'm realizing, oh my gosh, my wife is there. She's alone. I'm getting to my house. Another scripture jumps into my heart. Didn't know it. It was from Matthew 24 about the abomination of desolation. I reached to the doorknob. I began to pull the door open, even though that scripture was telling me, don't go into your house, don't return. I opened it up to see the most demonic presence I've ever seen. This presence that I encountered at my front door as I opened the door, uh, I can't tell you that it was the devil himself. He uh, was very dark. There was a uh, shroud of black around him. It wasn't like, a, say, an African-American skin or anything like that. It wasn't skin that was dark. It was a shroud of darkness that was over this uh, being. This being was very sinister looking and just his presence gripped my heart with great fear. Uh, at this point, I began to scream as loud as I could and I woke up from the dream. Y ahí tuvo la primera parte de su sueño. Hay a veces varias confusiones porque hay personas que leen la Biblia una vez y tienen su propia idea y sin embargo vemos muchos que hemos llevado años estudiándola. Eh, quiero explicarles que Mateo 24, ahí hay una profecía de doble cumplimiento. Está parcialmente cumplida en la toma de Jerusalén en el año 70 después de Cristo, pero hay cosas que todavía no se han cumplido. Y esa abominación desoladora, Jesucristo dijo que quien la iba a hacer era el anticristo. Ya en Mateo 24, la abominación, algo parecido a la abominación desoladora, la había hecho ya en el pasado Antíoco Epífanes al final del imperio griego. Y Cristo había ya profetizado que el segundo templo judío se iba a destruir. 
o sea, esta abominación desoladora sería en el tercer templo judío con el anticristo y lo asombroso del sueño es que él lo está teniendo especialmente en concordancia con la profecía bíblica porque todo esto de la marca de la persecución, de la abominación de la desolación no será el comienzo, será al final ya comenzando los tres años y medio finales de los siete, como dice la profecía de la semana 70 de Daniel. Eh, es que el sueño que él tiene eh, se va cumpliendo progresivamente y lo va teniendo en partes. Entonces él despierta de esta primera parte del sueño. Según él cuenta, él después entonces, eh, cuando tiene este sueño, vuelve de nuevo y se duerme. Y asombrosamente, cuando él se duerme, entonces tiene la revelación final de todo. Inmediatamente vuelve a caer el sueño. O sea que hasta que hasta que Dios no se lo da completo, Dios no lo deja. Y ya en la revelación final, Después de que él se despierta, ya entonces comienza a soñar más dinámicamente con la persecución que viene justamente para todos aquellos que se queden. Y lo sorprendente del caso es que nosotros los que conocemos las profecías bíblicas sabemos cómo va el orden de los tiempos en todo eso. Y al suceder esto, ya entonces uno sabe que sí, él tuvo esta revelación. Entonces él dice que cuando... Eh, va en el sueño a buscar a su esposa porque es algo natural que tú pienses rápido en tu familia. Él ve a esta eh, criatura demoníaca que se le manifiesta entonces en el caso de eh, la casa y que tiene una extraña piel oscura como nunca él eh, eh, verdad la había visto en su vida. Entonces vamos a ver aquí. Bible, uh... With with diligence, uh, I have a real habit in my life to always flip to the back of things, and I flipped to the back of the Bible, and it said apocalypse. I have to tell you, I don't know what apocalypse meant at the time. I had no idea what it meant. I began to read and and. Después de tener la primera parte del sueño, él busca una Biblia. All I could get out of what I was reading was that Jesus was going to come to his church and take away their candles. As a Catholic, that was very frightening to me because everything we did was with candles. You know, you, you had an Advent candle, a Lent candle, a, a Easter candle, a Christmas candle. You lit candles on the platform. You know, I mean, everything. You had purgatory candles. Everything was candles. And so uh, it made no sense to me. And I fell asleep. And instantly the dream began to start exactly where it left off, me facing this very sinister creature. Se queda dormido después de buscar la Biblia, después de levantarse aterrado de lo que vio, no tenía ni una sola idea de lo que estaba viendo, tan, tan eh, específico que lo ve, y entonces inmediatamente se duerme, comienza a soñar donde se quedó. M mira qué increíble. I, I think the creature uh, was a demon, uh, some sort of a demon presence. Uh, it was very, very intense and it gripped my heart. I slammed the door and ran off. I realized that my wife, in fact, wasn't in my home and that she was gone. I knew that by this presence. Um, it, it, it's, it's just hard to tell you how afraid I was. Uh, I've had a few experiences in my life with demons and witches manifesting in my hotel rooms and astral projecting in the soulish realm into my house and, and I've learned how to combat those kind of things. I'm not afraid of that anymore. Uh, they don't usually fool with me anymore because I, I know how to pray now. And, uh, but at this time, I had no comprehension of how to deal with this, this strong, strong evil being. And so I began to run, and I ran and ran and ran. I seemed to believe in my mind. In the dream, I ran a couple miles. And uh, I got caught by one of these strange-looking police trucks, uh, by these uh, p uh, military police. They knew my name. Even though I didn't tell them my name, they knew my name. And they took me to this uh, government building. It was a large building and uh, took me into a room and there was my wife and the older gentleman that I began to call the evangelist. They had uh, been captured and they knew exactly where to take me. That was very astounding to me because. O sea, él ya entonces está soñando en esta otra etapa del final cuando vienen eh, otra vez. Eh, tiene verdad, se comienza a soñar de dónde se quedó. Y entonces este, ve cuando están capturando a todos los eh, creyentes o los que se convierten después de que sucede el arrebatamiento o no creían y después eh, se convirtieron. Bueno, algunos convert se convertirán y otros no. Nuevamente, vuelvo y repito al hacer esta pausa. El hombre está hablando en inglés. Debajo, esas letras que usted puede ver ahí se llaman subtítulos. Están en español a la par de cómo él habla. Si las ve muy pequeñas, 
gire su teléfono para que las pueda ver. Tenemos que ver cómo trabajamos, porque aquí yo voy a estar enseñando algunos videos en inglés con traducciones y si meramente le tienen miedo al inglés y no ven bien que están los subtítulos en el español, ¿cómo hacemos? Vamos, voy a tener que entonces ignorar los comentarios porque así yo no puedo. Sigamos. I wondered how did they how did they know all this stuff about people? You know, I know that we're watched right now. I know that Christians are monitored in our country. I know that Bible believing Christians are monitored. The FBI monitors Bible believing Christians. It's been happening for years and years. It's recently there was a printout in major papers that described what the FBI considered dangerous people. One of the uh, categories was Christians who are Bible believing, regular church attenders that believe what the Bible says is relevant for today. Those are threatening individuals to the eh, tal parece que eso pues eh, en esto tengo claro que es en el sueño que él tuvo. Sigamos viendo. FBI And so they knew things about us, and they took us into this room. I was in there with the, my wife and this older gentleman. They began to politely interrogate us. Uh, they began to ask us to, you know, be cooperative, come into this agreement with this new government, and everything will be fine for you. Well, my wife, uh, who you'll meet if you uh, come to meetings in the future, is one of the boldest Christians I've ever met. She's also probably one of the kindest and most gentle believers I've ever met. But she will get in the devil's face. And she and this older man began to preach to these uh, people that were trying to convince us of this uh, new uh, alignment of this government. And uh, so they took us out of there and put us in another room. And now it was uh, a lot of mind control interrogation. Uh, what happened was in my mind, I could feel pulled in almost. Siga, los están interrogando. Eso fue en el sueño que él tuvo. Nuevamente les quiero decir, yo no voy a estar poniendo aquí un video en inglés que sé que la mayoría de las personas que nos ven en otros países de habla hispana no nos van a entender. Usted tiene que pensar las cosas con lógica. Yo estoy poniendo aquí los subtítulos para que me entiendan. Vamos a ver cómo trabajamos porque así no se puede, mi hermano, se lo digo de verdad. Y estamos comentando por encima de ese video para que las cosas que él soñó, las cosas que él dice, pues puedan también entenderlas un poquito mejor. Eh, si tienen problemas para ver este, los subtítulos, giren el teléfono o conéctense directo a su televisor, porque el problema es que si yo agrando más la imagen, entonces después cuando el video queda grabado, los subtítulos en inglés automáticos de Facebook se van a poner por encima de los subtítulos en español. Lo repito, lo vuelvo a decir, a veces se conectan después y no esperan a que la grabación termine para ver las explicaciones anteriores. Y la estoy explicando, ¿verdad?, de buena fe, porque es que nos hemos tardado un poco, ya vamos para las dos horas de transmisión, pero los vamos a dejar, ¿verdad?, con esta revelación final que el hermano Ken Peters tuvo del sueño. ...to this uh, uh, order and say, you know, if we just don't cause any trouble, it'll be okay. That's how my mind began to function. But yet uh, the older gentleman and my wife began to... Um, just fight this with, uh, with all their spiritual strength and challenge it with scriptures. Um, it was amazing to me um, because the, the, um, the capturing uh, of us was um, uh, almost as though they had planned it out. You know, I don't know how this being got to my house and, and how they knew to catch me, but it seemed like uh, it was being planned out. Some strange things that I saw right before this happened to me was that all the nations of the world were as one. There's no longer any sovereign individual nations. Continents were no longer uh, divided into countries, but continents were divided into regions. And uh, one thing I want to tell you about this time, that the awareness of God being on the global scene at this time was nearly impossible to detect. The global order had no presence of God in it whatsoever. A evil at this point in the dream had begun to pervade every aspect of society. Darkness was everywhere, and I was telling Stan this, that what I saw was there was a clear line of who was God's people and who wasn't. I mean, you could walk down the street and you would know instantly who was who. Escuche eso, mi hermano. Escuche bien. Seguimos. It's not like it is right now, whether you're wondering if, you know, sometimes you go into large groups of people and you're wondering, I wonder who's saved here. I wonder who knows the Lord. This was so evident. There was a clear line of delineation. Demarcation was marked uh, spiritually and was clearly seen. 
when when we were being interrogated uh, the the mind control was uh, phenomenal it wasn't like any human could do uh, in an interrogation uh, my mind began to really be swept with with uh, uh, anxiety and fear and then uh, because my wife and this older gentleman kept being very bold and kind of in in your face with them they took us out and they took us into this very very long corridor in this corridor was thousands of people lined up it, the corridor uh, it seemed to be at least a hundred yards long probably longer but in my ability in, in depth perception in the dream it was a long long line of people and every five or six minute minutes excuse me these people would walk forward and take a step we had been in this line for a long time when people would barge in through the doors on the side of this corridor and begin to grill people and tell them to renounce their faith they would never use the name Jesus they would never use the name Jesus Christ they would never use the name God but they would say you should renounce your faith in him while you can still live and your faith is empty and it was a, a blasphemous kind of uh, uh, challenging that these people were bringing against the people in the line and every so often somebody would crack they would just collapse and and they would drag them away and they would renounce their faith in Christ it, it, it made me very very uh, uneasy to be in this line because I wasn't quite sure what they were gonna do to us I wasn't sure if they were gonna put us in prison or maybe beat us up to scare us or or what it wasn't made clear yet to us Eventually, we made it through a battery of three double doors. After the last double door, we were put into like a holding cell kind of a room. And there was the old man uh, in the front of the line, my wife, and then myself. And they Ese old man, o la persona mayor de la que él habla, es un viejito que él ve en su revelación, en el sueño, que, que era un predicador que estaba junto con él en la primera parte del sueño donde ellos predicaban y habían grandes milagros y hubo un tiempo de refrigerio y ahora él lo ve al preso con su esposa que ya se la habían llevado cuando él fue para su casa y por ir a ver a su esposa se lo llevaron a él también. Por eso en la Biblia dice que cuando suceda esta abominación desoladora inmediatamente debes de huir con todo lo que tengas encima. Es claro, es impresionante lo que Dios le reveló a él siendo inconverso. Open the doors very quickly and took this older gentleman into the room and uh, I don't know what happened to him at this point of the dream because they shut the doors very quickly. Uh, six minutes or so later, they opened the doors this time wide open, and what I saw was uh, the most empty feeling I think I've ever experienced in my whole life. I saw this man that was a very, very big man. I, I, was, I was sharing uh, earlier in the tour that he was tall like a, a professional basketball player, but he was very uh, big like a professional football player. He was an extremely large uh, man, and he had a big uh, hood, like a satin hood, over his head with eye holes uh, to see out of. My wife was in front of me, and they began to tell her she could renounce her faith and, and live. And now I realized what was happening, because this man was standing there with a huge sword. I probably should have drawn a little transparency tonight to show you what the sword looked like, but... Yo voy a terminar, ¿verdad?, de explicar un poco lo que, lo que él eh, tiene, ¿verdad?, en el sueño y luego vamos a tratar también de pasar eh, solamente un poquito sobre el caso de la parte final. La espada que él ve, ¿verdad?, en el caso de la mano del verdugo es una espada que era, vamos a reducir, vamos, vamos a decirlo de una manera para que todo el mundo me entienda, era una espada de los tiempos de los árabes. Um, yo les puedo recomendar que vean nuestro video sobre las langostas del apocalipsis donde explicamos en su contexto todo lo que es el significado de estas langostas y es que eso de estar que dice la Biblia que por lo menos los decapitados regresarán y gobernarán con Cristo también el milenio. Obviamente habrá muerte por decapitación y los únicos que hacen eso, usted me perdona, pero son los extremistas, los extremistas de cierta creencia que va relacionada al, miero, al Medio Oriente y él soñar eso, o sea, ya se está viendo algo demasiado claro de lo que pasará y algo demasiado simbólico, pero demasiado profundo de una persona que no conocía ni tan siquiera las sagradas escrituras en ese momento que la tiene, o sea, hay demasiada evidencia y yo llevo años estudiando esto, o sea, es, es claro. Sigamos por aquí. Va, vamos, vamos a seguir viendo un poquito aquí este, en el caso, eh, déjame ver por aquí donde nos quedamos. Y queremos seguir, pues obviamente, eh, eh, siguiendo verdad el caso de la lógica del sueño 
eh, dice por aquí. Va, va, vamos a seguir con el caso del control mental en el interrogatorio. Por eso les digo, mejor es irse en el arrebatamiento, mi hermano. Vamos, vamos a ver. Being interrogated, uh, the, the mind control was uh, phenomenal. It wasn't like any human could do uh, in an interrogation. Uh, my mind began to really be swept with, with uh, uh, anxiety and fear. And then uh, because my wife and this older gentleman kept being very bold and kind of in, in your face with them, they took us out and they took us into this very, very long corridor. In this corridor was thousands of people lined up. It, the corridor, uh, it seemed to be at least a hundred yards long, probably longer. But in my ability, in, in depth perception in the dream, it was a long, long line of people. And every five or six minute, minutes, excuse me, these people would walk forward and take a step. We had been in this line for a long time when people would barge in through the doors on the side of this corridor and begin to grill people and tell them to renounce their faith. They would never use the name Jesus. They would never use the name Jesus Christ. They would never use the name God. But they would say, you should renounce your faith in him while you can still live. And your faith is empty. And it was a, a blasphemous kind of a, a challenging that these people were bringing against the people in the line and every so often somebody would crack they would just collapse and and they would drag them away and they would renounce their faith in Christ it, it, it made me very very uh, uneasy to be in this line because I wasn't quite sure what they were going to do to us I wasn't sure if they were going to put us in prison or maybe beat us up to scare us or or what it wasn't made clear yet to us Eventually, we made it through a battery of three double doors. After the last double door, we were put into like a holding cell kind of a room. And there was the old man uh, in the front of the line, my wife, and then myself. And they opened the doors very quickly and took this older gentleman into the room. And uh, I don't know what happened to him at this point of the dream because they shut the doors very quickly. Oh, six minutes or so later, they opened the doors this time wide open. And what I saw was uh, the most empty feeling I think I've ever experienced in my whole life. I saw this man that was a very, very big man. I, I, was, I was sharing uh, earlier in the tour that he was tall like a, a professional basketball player, but he was very uh, big like a professional football player. He was an extremely large uh, man, and he had a big uh, hood, like a satin hood, over his head with eye holes uh, to see out of. My wife was in front of me, and they began to tell her she could renounce her faith and, and live. And now I realized what was happening, because this man was standing there with a huge sword. I probably should have drawn a little transparency tonight to show you what the sword looked like. But uh, to, to, to trace it kind of in the sky, so to speak, it, it, it started down here with a handle and began to come up like this, and then like this, and then a big arch like this. And it was a very, very frightening looking sword. And then I saw this table that was a little bit longer than the average human being and a little bit wider. And they str my wife said she wasn't going to renounce her faith in Jesus. She began to preach powerfully. And, uh, you know, I wish, I wish even today I was as bold as her right now because I'm not. And she began to uh, just rebuke the devil, and you name it, I mean, she was doing it. And so they got angry and strapped her down on this table. By the way, it was like this, face first. So she was looking up to the sky with this man standing behind her with this sword. He took the sword and chopped her head right off, right in my presence. I saw it. I don't want to tell you that I want this to happen to my wife. I don't know if this will happen. I've never heard clearly God tell me that I would die as a martyr yet. I know that everything in the dream so far has transpired almost exactly as I saw it. But what happened was with this sword, it, it, it left an indelible mark in my life. Many years after the dream, I was participating in a uh, county fair. I was actually uh, visiting it in a place up in California. Uh, at Visalia and I was watching a parade and there was a bunch of older guys riding little motorcycles and zooming around and they had vests on and little caps it, it was uh, kinda strange to me I didn't really know how it fit in but afterwards I was walking down a side street and there was a big big van a big cargo van and it said please support uh, children's hospitals the Shriners etc etc and then all of a sudden it, it had this cap that these guys were wearing and the sword that I saw this executioner holding. 
I just sat there and froze when I saw this sword. I, I didn't, you know, I didn't know how to, to, to take it. I didn't know how to perceive it. It was, uh, it just emptied me out of all my ability to, to think really clearly. When I left that fair, I went and started studying out because I thought the Shriners were pretty nice people. I mean, they had nice hospitals and, you know, they helped a lot of crippled kids and that kind of stuff. And I had no idea, but something told me that this sword uh, was connected to them somehow. And I began to research them and I found out that they in fact are involved in quite a bit of some, some dark, dark things. And I found that the, the little cap that they wear, the fez, is red because they've promised to dip it in the blood of Christians because of the anger and animosity towards the Crusades where the Christians uh, killed lots of uh, Muslims and Jews. The other thing is the sword and it's called the Sword of Scimitar. And uh, I searched this out, and it was the exact sword that this individual was using to execute people. I had just witnessed my wife being executed. And uh, I was very grieved, but to be very truthful with you, I was more afraid of what was going to happen to me next than the fact that my wife had just died. And I know that sounds very selfish, but if I told you any differently, I'd be lying, and God would, would deal with me. I was more concerned about my life than her dying right then. I was very, very afraid, and I knew that now, now I'm going to die. And I knew that in my mind, I, I could not do this. I, I was not going to make it. I, I was paralyzed. And my mind began to torment me and almost became literally blanked out. My stomach began to shout out loud that, Jesus, please help me. I'm afraid. But the message couldn't get out because my mind was paralyzed. And it was as though I had the flu, an extreme case of the flu. My teeth were chattering and I was shaking with, with uh, chills in this line. I could not process my thoughts whatsoever. It was, as, it was as though that I had totally lost all faculties of my uh, mind, my ability to, to cognitively uh, be aware of what was going on at that moment. It was terrible, and although uh, it only lasted for maybe five or six minutes, it seemed like hours because of the extreme weight of this attack on me. I know a lot now, more than what I did in the dream, about the assaults of Satan and how he can work. But during this dream, I had no idea. I began to really try to cry out in my stomach. All I can tell you is I knew it was my spirit now, but in the dream it was just a war in my stomach and my mind. And finally it's as though something penetrated out of my stomach into my mind and I was able to spiritually call on Jesus and say, I'm afraid Jesus, please save me, help me. At the very instant that uh, communication spiritually happened, I felt a hand grip my shoulder. And again, it's very unusual because uh, for a brief period of time, I was more interested in the hand gripping me than actually what was happening to me. As soon as this hand gripped me, I got very warm and the chills left me. And it was as though my mind could now see and kind of comprehend clearly what was going on. I, I'll never forget the hand. It was a very rugged looking hand. And uh, it looked as though it had been through uh, a great deal of work. Almost, you know, like a, 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 a man who's a blue-collar worker that uses his hands like a mechanic or a builder or a plumber or something. It was a very rugged hand, and it was, it was a very thick hand. It wasn't like mine. You know, I'm kind of a small-boned person, but this was a very solid hand, and it gripped my shoulder, and warmth and peace began to flood through me. After a few moments, I turned back, and there was the Lord Jesus Christ standing behind me. I don't know how he got in that room because it was just a small holding cell and the doors behind us were shut. And then all of a sudden he looked me in the eyes. He looked at me very, very sternly. It wasn't uh, like a reproof or, or a conviction, but it was more of just him looking and peering into my life. And the most unusual thing occurred to me at, a, at the very instant I looked at him, it, his eyes were not brown or green or blue or anything like that. They appeared to be red like fire. And, and they were just looking clearly through my whole life. Somehow at that moment, I was able to realize that him looking at me was actually looking through me. And he knew everything of me. He knew my strengths. He knew my weaknesses. He knew every lie deep down inside of me. He knew every deception. He knew every place that I was afraid and I had compartmentalized. My whole being... Uh, by him looking into me was exposed to me. 
It was very frightening. It was very, um, it was a very intense moment. Uh, I wish I could say that seeing Jesus at that moment made me very happy. It didn't. It made me very fearful. I understand now what the fear of the Lord is because of that experience. I've had the Lord visit me three times in my life, the resurrected Christ, and each time he's manifested himself, it was never a tiptoe through the tulips for me. It was always, I wanted to hide under the carpet because uh, am I here to die? What are you going to do? What do you want from me? It was a powerful uh, uh, manifestation of Jesus. It was not this, we're pals and buddies kind of a thing. I did not see that. I saw him in his awesomeness. And when he looked through me, he knew everything about me. He knew every nook and cranny. And about a, a few moments after realizing this, realizing my own depravity, he spoke to me and he looked sternly into my eyes and he said, Fear not, my son, for death will never hold you. This was unusual to me. And then instantly it was like a, a kind of a courage flooded through me. I wish I could tell you that I got very bold and preached a great sermon and got everybody saved. But I didn't. It was just courage to go through what was before me. And so these men strapped me down now. And this uh, individual, uh, by the way, before they strapped me down, they asked me one more time, you can renounce him now. And I said, no, he's the Lord of all. And I, 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 I knew that he had saved me in the dream because of the prayer and the thing with that older man. But when, he, when I looked at him, I knew now, and I can tell you folks, I know for a certainty, he is the Lord of lords and the king of every king. Amen. And I'm telling you where the scriptures say, every knee will bow, every tongue will confess his lordship, whether in heaven, on earth, or under the earth. When I saw him, there is not one knee, there is not one tongue that will not confess his lordship, regardless of what side of the coin they are, when he reveals himself to them. Every knee will bow, trust me. Because this presence that he stood in was so powerful, so awesome, so anointed, so um, uh, terrible, so to speak. Like the scriptures say, he's terrible in his presence. Terrible in the sense that you knew that there's no power on earth that could challenge him. Folks, I, there, I'm not afraid of nuclear bombs at all. I have no fear of nuclear uh, disaster. Because I know that the God of the universe that revealed himself to me is greater than any demonstration that man can concoct. Right. The creator of heaven and earth gave us the wisdom to make those stupid bombs. <laughs> he is not going to be outdone by his creation. That's right. And I saw that about him. And then they strapped me down and they said, you can renounce him. And I said, no, I can't renounce him because he's the Lord of all. And he should be your Lord. That was my great sermon. I wish, you know, it could have been a lot longer. But probably if I would have got going any more than that, I would have messed it up like just about everything else. That's why I have this on an outline because it's 20 years old. Even though I, I can relive points of it right now, and I, I have purposely asked tonight, door, the Lord tonight, please don't let me bawl up here. Please don't let me weep and cry. Because what I saw happen to my wife, it, it gripped me, and it still grips me to this day. And I have seen my wife literally become this person that lived in this dream. When, they, when this man cut my head off, as soon as the very instant I saw the sword coming down and it touched my neck, the moment that the blade touched my neck, I was gone. I felt no death whatsoever. And all of a sudden, I was up, in, it wasn't a ceiling as this high, but it was quite high. And I was standing there and again holding a person's hand, and I was looking down upon the scene. And it was very grotesque, and, and I don't know why I was shown it this way, but I'm going to tell you exactly what I saw from the beginning to the end. My head was cut off, and I was bleeding profusely. It was very, very strange. And even though this hand was holding me, I didn't know who it was. I was actually more interested in seeing me dead there than, than the fact that I was actually delivered from the death. And then all of a sudden, I looked down and realized, my gosh, it's another one of these rugged hands holding my hand, and I, I looked up, and it was the Lord again, the Lord Jesus Christ. Folks, it doesn't matter what you go through here. It doesn't matter what trial you're experiencing. And I don't know why the Lord doesn't choose to show everybody himself. I don't know. I have no idea why he showed me this. I was a sinner. I was not even interested in following him. I didn't ask for this. I, I'm not worthy of receiving anything where he showed himself to me. And, and I can tell you that whatever trial you go through, even if it's being brought to a point where you have to lay down your life, it is worth it. Yes, it 
because of what I saw in my Savior. At this point now, it went from a stern, powerful, all-knowing God to a God who was holding my hand that gave me the understanding that now I was his son, I was his brother. Lo impresionante de este sueño, y ahí pues obviamente él ya contó el final, lo impresionante de este sueño es que debido a este sueño fue que él se convirtió y en ese sueño le dio su vida al Señor. Um, como vengo diciendo, es impactante en las maneras que una persona no convertida, no conocedora de las escrituras, eh, viene a tener un sueño de esta manera en la que se dicen cosas tan específicas que ya existían en el futuro y no solo eso, sino también con la precisión de los eventos proféticos como nosotros obviamente todos los conocemos. Yo voy a terminar esta transmisión, ¿verdad?, diciéndole más o menos como él lo dice, que esta grabación, vuelvo y repito, este hombre que predicó se llama Ken Peters. Él tuvo esta revelación en el 1981 cuando no era convertido. El video es del año 2000 y obviamente lo pasamos, él hablando en inglés con subtítulos en español para que se viera evidencia que sí, obviamente era lo que decía. Si no puede ver bien los subtítulos en español, vire su teléfono o meramente conecte su teléfono a la televisión para que lo pueda ver más grande, pero específicamente está bien traducido con esa actitud en los subtítulos. Pero termino diciéndole, en este tiempo, aceptar a Cristo como único Señor y Salvador personal no te cuesta nada. En esos tiempos que vienen, de lo cual yo puedo confirmar que eso es lo que viene, la Biblia lo dice y lo que estamos viendo hoy en día es tendencia en estos tiempos no te cuesta nada aceptar a Cristo y entregarle tu vida al Señor y permanecer. Pero en esos tiempos costará la vida. Soy Miguel Sánchez Ávila. Recuerden que siempre que estamos aquí en vivo no tienen que entrar preguntando de qué están hablando, qué están diciendo, qué pasó, qué fue, no sé, llegué tarde o qué sé yo. Recuerden que en los en vivo son también en vivos que se pasan, que quedan grabados. Por lo cual, si usted se conecta tarde, no olvide que la grabación siempre queda. Entonces usted la puede ver desde el comienzo. Si no le gusta el conteo, si no le gusta, usted meramente lo adelanta. Tan sencillo como eso. Dios les bendiga, Dios les guarde. Yo les recomiendo que lo vean desde el principio. Aquellos que se conectaron tarde, porque está muy interesante. Y la explicación que dimos <risa> también. Ay, Dios mío, sobre lo de muchos correrán de aquí para allá, porque de verdad que está cañón. Dios les bendiga hacia adelante y en bendición.